We're good. Okay. All right. All right. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the South Borough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for Wednesday, May 19, 2021. Um, before we start, I'll read the, the notice that we read for COVID. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law 30A, Chapter 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals will be conduct conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific, specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Southborough's website at www.southboroughtown.com. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to watch or participate in the meeting may do so in the following manner by finding the meeting at www.southboroughtown.com slash remote meetings. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on Southboro's website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay, so the first item we have on the agenda this evening is 200 Turnpike Road. CMJ Ventures has a special permit seeking a special permit to allow the use of contractor storage yard in a highway business district. Did I say that correctly? Relief is requested under 17485, C12, 17419, and 17490. So you, you have the, uh, the notice to read, Katie? Yes. The Board of Appeals of the Town of Southboro will hold a public hearing via a virtual Zoom meeting on Wednesday, May 19th, 2021 at 7 p.m. with regard to the petition of CMJ Ventures 200 Turnpike Road, Southboro, Mass. The petitioner is seeking a special permit to allow the use of a contractor's storage yard in the Highway Business District. Relief is requested under 174.85 C12, 174.19 and 174.9 E. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing limitation on in-person gatherings, there'll be no in-person attendance by the public. And you can watch it on YouTube, as Chairman Williams had said. All right. Very good, Katie. Uh, do we have somebody waiting to make a presentation? Yeah, um, Mr. Crandall? Hold on, we're all on. Sorry, Jason, I pulled you over a little, um, little too early. All right, good evening, um, Mr. Crandall, Mr. Santora. Is one of you going to begin with the presentation? Um, could I just ask a point of order question before we get started? Uh, I, I heard the reading. Uh, we, I understand, I, I heard that it said uh, business, highway business district, and I understand we're in the business village district. It's a little confusing, but I, I believe I, and then, um, I, well, we, we, we actually had just discussed that, and I think I thought I heard the tail end of it. I'm yeah, sorry, I think it's correct to call it the high, a highway business district, not the business village. I, um, yeah, I just, I just, and I'm sorry to get off track right off the bat on, on a hearing, but I, I reviewed everything prior to the meeting just, just to get take a look at it, and I, 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 um. I noticed on both districts, are you 
is allowed by special permit of the planning board. And I and I, we looked at it and looked at it before the hearing, but I, I'm looking at the zoning bylaw now, and I, I, uh, and both, I, I don't know if, if if we are out of order. We may not need this petition. Um. So I no, I I, I do think it's it's still required. I think um, Mr. Mickelson made a point earlier to say you know, it's a minor thing, but you know, could somebody you know, appeal based on the fact that the application said business village instead of highway business district, which I think is a, to me, it's a relatively minor point, but it's it's one that you should just be aware of. Okay. It's, so, and but I guess what I'm saying is I looked at both both districts and, and read the permitted uses and they both say contractors yard allowed by special permit. By special permit, correct. And, Craig, do you have something to say? But it says by the planning board, so I felt well. Well, well, well yeah, yeah, that's that's the difference between business highway and business village. Um, the business village is really the the downtown core of the of the town, like Main Street and um, like Boston Road and such. This is, from what I'm looking at the zoning map, clearly business highway, um, which puts the special permit at the zoning board. Okay. So you're in the right okay. place. Okay. okay. It was I'm noticed. Sorry. It was <laughs> yeah, noticed so properly. Confusing. Yeah, it was noticed properly to the media as well as the abutters. Very good. Um, so that's why we feel that it's still appropriate for us to hear it, even though there was some confusion on the application itself. But that's where Mr. Williams was saying, we feel it's clear because it was noticed properly. Okay, um, great. But it might be that straw that somebody grasped onto if they're really opposed to you to claim an inconsistency. So it's... Well I, if, I think that, sorry to interrupt you. If, if you. You do want to be heard. And I think to perfect it, we're going to be going before the planning board for our, for our uh, major, major residential, I mean, sorry, major um, permit and our uh, lid permit, and we can, they'll hear us too. So if if we need to perfect anything, we'll be going before that board also. So I, I, we do want to proceed. Okay. Okay. I think, yeah, I, I know that you do have to go before the planning board as well. So to me, it makes sense to go ahead and to, to continue. Thank you. Great, uh, and thank you everyone for, uh, for you know, I know I, for all, you have these uh, meetings every uh, Thursday night or so, or you know, every so many weeks. So I appreciate you all being here and, uh, and taking the time to hear, hear us. Uh, and I know there's a few other people on the agenda as well. So we'll be uh, as, as, as brief as we can. Um, Mark's gonna share just uh, an overview of the, the uh, plan that we have in place, but I wanted to more or less just introduce myself uh, um, you know the company that uh, the, the ground sphere company that's that's looking to um, that's occupy the space that that um, we're looking at the 200 turnpike and just share a little bit about who we are and and um, and I'm the owner of that company. So I, I wanted to ask also ask can I share uh, can I share my screen as far as I, I have a quick PowerPoint that I wanted to share. Yeah, that's fine. Um, you can. All right. Do you have to give permission, Kate? Katie? Okay, right now it just says um, that it's disabled. So you have to. You have this to made you co-host. It might take a minute, but um, you should should be able to see the the green share screen on the bottom soon. All right. Interesting. Give me one minute here. Um, Do you see it? Yep, I have okay. that. Uh, I'm, I'm a little while. Uh, Unfortunately, um, 
Let's see, I should have it in a second. One, two. All right, did I do it right? Can you see a PowerPoint presentation? I see a picture of JC Grounds. All right, signed. that's it. All right, so I'll go through this really quick. Um, I just wanted to share, uh, so I'm the owner of the company. I started, started the business when I was 16 years old. I'm the only owner um, and we're, we're a uh, grounds care company and our, what we're looking to put over a 200 turn bike would, would end up being a, you know, I think it's, there's nothing better to call it than a contractor's yard. Um, but I do, uh, I am aware that that's sometimes, uh, I've, you know, I've dealt several towns in the past where we have a main corporate office out of Danvers, Mass. And our, we originally were in Peabody, Mass. And before we found this site in Danvers, uh, it took us a little bit of time because contractor yards are becoming, uh, I think, something that's challenging to find uh, nowadays. So what I wanted to share is um, a little bit about us, just um, our, our company and what we're looking to run out of 200 Turnpike uh, would be more of a snow division of the company. So we run, um, right now we, we run around 45 to 50 people uh, full-time year round. And then during a snow event, we, we run over 500 people um, and I, can, I tell people now that it's, it's kind of like a wedding. If you can imagine when, when you go to a wedding, there's caterers and there's DJs and everything else that come to the wedding and, and it's an event. And all these people come, typically they're working a second job when they come to the wedding and, and they all come together to put on the event. And that's more or less what we do during a snowstorm. Um, 200 Turnpike wouldn't have all those people. We'd use that site for a corporate, for an office, for a branch location. We do a lot of hiring out of there. We're planning to hire a lot of people out of the surrounding towns and South Pearl, hopefully as well. And um, and then we would have uh, some truck storage there, some material storage, uh, but more or less what the way we work, we only do commercial grounds care. So we're, we're taking care of sites like Leahy Hospitals uh, Network and um, Curry Coffee. We take care of the corporate campus, but most of our employees during the winter report directly to the sites. Um, we do obviously have some de-icing truck drivers and whatnot that come in and out of our uh, branch location, would come out in and out of the branch location. So this is um, a picture of our, our Danvers office, uh, the front front uh, side coming into the, into the property. Um, and let me see if I can, this is our backyard in that office. Um, I'm a very particular person, so I, I keep a pretty clean space. Um, the building in Danvers is about um, 17,000 square feet on three acres, which is fairly close to what we're looking to, we're proposing out, out there in Southboro. Um, I, to the point where this location here, um, even our, the, our walls, like inside our offices, we've got about um, 6,000, 7,000 square feet of office space. And I have it, I have our maintenance department literally send painters in every other year to make sure that you know, the, the property is up to snuff as far as the way I, I want it to be. And uh, there's a schedule for all of that. So you can see, this is a typical night. If you came to our yard any day uh, and you came at the end of the day, this is obviously in the winter, but everything's lined up clean. We have all newer vehicles, uh, newer equipment. And uh, this is a picture of some of our team in, in Danvers. Um, we're pretty heavy on training and um, in safety. So we, we do um, training uh, throughout the year for both uh, grounds in winter and then uh, or landscaping in winter rather services and our people are uniformed and, and uh, background checked and um, you know there's a slew of different things just to, to work with us just like anywhere else it's got a you know professional organization um, we also work with the community so in Danvers there's uh, Essex Ag Agricultural Institute what you see here is a picture of um, all the kids so Essex Aggie sends their kids in here uh, several times a year and they'll tour through our offices and um and they'll also see like the different positions that are that are here and out within our company so we like to i like to say that you know when i started this i was a kid with a truck uh, and a lawnmower basically and um and we i was fortunate enough to really grab some uh, great mentors and and now we've got an amazing team of people but um but it's really neat to show the kids that you know, the trades, you can still have a professional career if you work up, your, work your way up, you can stay in the field and become great at what you do, but you can also work work up into a management position too, if that's something you'd like to do. 
Um, and that's what we're showing here is just, is the path to leadership for these kids. Um, <clears throat> we hire several of them every year. And um, this is just a quick little video about us. If you, if, you know, if everyone wouldn't mind watching it for a few minutes, um, I can share that if it'll work. I don't have any sound. No sound? Yeah. Oh. All right. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it working. But um, <clears throat> throughout the, you know, throughout this video, it, it shares, and this is on our website, but it just more or less shares um, the different positions are, uh, you know, in the company and in some of the community and in the, um, the different employees that work with us here. So, um, And last, uh, I'll show, I'll share, um, this is our, we put together a growth plan several years ago. Um, I, I built, you know, I had an artist design this and in 2014 is when we came up with it. We're, we're right on track to, to accomplish. Him. We, we looked in Westboro, Southboro. We really like the Route 9 corridor. We like the fact that we can jump onto 495 and uh, get over to Chelmsford, which is in our service area. And we like we can come down Mass Pike or, or, or uh, Route 9 and get in, over to, into Waltham in that area. Um, we've got a very heavy presence in Waltham now. And we're, um, we're expanding our presence in the Southboro area, the Westboro area. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, but we currently working with UPS um, and uh, in our case centers and um, in Market Basket, all in, you know, Framingham, Ashland, all around where, where Selfro is. So trying to build our customer base up there. And the last few, last couple of slides I'll show, this was our building in Danvers when we bought it. Obviously on the left is when we bought the building. It was um, in pretty poor condition. Um, we we made a, uh, over a million dollar investment in the building over a course of about 10 years um, after we bought the purchase of property, that's, that's what we put into it and um, really cleaned it up, you know, from the outside um, and in the inside. <clears throat> and I just wanted to share this because again, you know, I, I think we're not the average contractor where um, uh, it took me, a, it took us a long time to get to where we are, but, um, but we're not the, you know, the dirty contractor that's looking to just, come into Southboro and um, have a, you know, messy space and everything else. We want to enhance the property, you know, make sure the asset goes up in value, um, bring some, you know, obviously some jobs to town and hopefully we can be successful with the business there. Um, so that's just a really quick summary of who we are. Um, more than open to, you know, fielding any questions at any point of this meeting, but I just wanted to share that. That's, that's for the most part what I have. Um. John, do you do you have anything about the specific property and what the plans are? I think that would probably be helpful for the for the board members to go into detail on the, on the property itself. Absolutely, um, Mark is going to speak to a lot of that. Um, okay, the existing I will share really quick. Can you? Am I off the screen share now, or do you guys see my son? No, I, I see. A, <laughs> yeah, your boys. Baby we have in, your a, son. in a swing, so. There you go. All right. So, um, so I, um, the Do you building want me to share the plan, John. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just share really quick. It, it is an, it's an existing metal building and, and Mark's going to share, you know, a little bit more on the plan. Okay. I need, um, permission also on the sheet screen sharing. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Can you see the plan, everybody? Yep. Okay, great. So let me try to. Okay, um, thank you, everybody. My name is Mark Santora. I'm a civil engineer from Grafton, Massachusetts. And um, John has engaged our services to be the civil engineer record for the all the um, the meetings and the the planning of the of the project, the conservation filing and and also um the the, the uh 
all the permits for the project and will also be the engineer of record for any of the building of the proposed building construction. The, the, the property is on Route 9, but we access it through uh, Middle Road. So um, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but I don't think so. But um, we, we, we're not no, we coming. Oh, you can. Great. Okay. Yeah. So we, so Middle Road is the um, the access. This is um, this is west east. Um, so we, we're always always be coming from from the west, coming in on Middle Road, and then we're gonna. This this is a um, a common drive with a, an existing property here, and this building right here is existing. So we, um, we, we never have any plan to, to go left on Middle Road. John's whole operation would come in and go out and go back down Route 9 and go to his service areas from there. So we, we would share this common drive. This won't be modified at all. This has been constructed on a, on a previous project and it's stable and, and this is the access for these two existing properties. Uh, our plan is to add a it's 100 by 70 building perpendicular to the existing 100 by 60 building open up a, a doorway this this building has a it's like a split level and we're going to we're going to lower the elevation out around here and open up a door so that he'd be able to drive his vehicles in park park in this building use it for lining up his vehicles and then he could also drive right through and out and back around. And we're also going to leave an opening so that you can bring smaller vehicles underneath this building. And then above it will remain office space. This other structure right here is a proposed salt uh, shed. We... Sorry. I can't hear you anymore, Mark. You lost, lost my um, audio? Oh, there you go. Now, now we can hear you. It will lost you for 20 seconds. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, this. I was um, just about to explain the salt shed. This other building right here is a proposed salt shed. It's um, similar to the buildings that John had in his presentation. And it also, um, it, you know, it, this property butts right up against the town of Southboro DPW and the town salt shed is right here. So we're literally put in identical use, although our use is private and, and the town's use is public, but with the, the um, the activities are going to be the same, same time of year when it's when it's snow season. That John will use this facility to access the roads to to go to his clients' private yards and and, and maintain their parking lots. At that time, there won't be a lot of traffic. He's going to be out fighting snowstorms. At the same time, the town's DPW or the state highway are going to be out on the highway, and likely there won't be a lot of traffic during those times. That will be John's highest traffic time. And you know, the rest of the season is, is he will use it for his regular landscape business, but he won't have the, the volume of the traffic in and out of the site as at, the, at its peak during a snowstorm. We have um, an existing septic system that's gonna have to be um, upgraded to a state-of-the-art septic system. The right here is the active area. This is the proposed reserve area. The site will be bounded by a retaining wall and we'll have to comply with stormwater management. And I'm having trouble with my internet connection. Can everybody hear me okay still? Yeah, I can okay. still hear you. Thank you. I got a warning on the screen. So we will need to comply with stormwater management and the um, town of South Spurs bylaws with regard to the zone on the, um, with the, with the, the planning. And it's within a, a zone that is gonna require a, um, a low impact development. So we'll, we'll have to go before the planning board and comply with all the performance standards of, of the bylaw with regard to that. But tonight, I, as we discussed in the beginning of the meeting, we're before you just for the use. And um, so I, I don't wanna to get too heavy into the, um, the technical aspects of it, but we do have um, to, you know, drainage and parking designed at this point to what we believe meets the bylaw. And we will go through the process with your other boards to, to vet that through peer review and, 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 and everything that it will take to get, to get, to work out the technical nuts and bolts of this. But we, um, John, we, John, I think gave a great presentation and he, he's, I, I, I've worked with a lot of clients. He's, I think he's got a, He's got a good operation and, and I, I do believe this is a good fit 
and uh, you know, especially with its its use being back to back with the town's DPW, and and, and I, you know, I know that in municipal use, it's it's not it's not the same, and they have rights beyond for, for the public interest. But it, it is a good place for for this for this for this use, and, and there are other uses, I believe, in that are allowed now. That would be a lot more. Um, obtrusive to the neighborhood. This this would be a relatively benign use because of his his um his his his, his summer activities that he's, uh, won't be there won't be a lot of traffic there. So um I'll leave it at that and if anyone has any any questions I'd be glad to answer them. All right thanks Mark. Thank you. Uh, Paul is the longest serving member you want to start with questions? Um, I don't have a lot of questions following along. Um, I guess, I mean, the only, I guess, initial concern I would have is the, I guess, the abutment sharing this driveway, you know, if there's any uh, any issue with, with them. I don't know if anything was said. I didn't see anything. Maybe I missed it, but I don't know if there's any anything for well, or against from the folks they share the driveway with it's my understanding john has talked to her and um and, and john you can elaborate on, on on your relationship with her and, and i think they need there's some um some business that you plan to do with her as you can explain but i i we we don't we did not receive any negative feedback and i, I when i surveyed the property she was out there we she's aware of john's interest in the property there's never been any you know, negative um, comment or feedback that we've seen. So we, 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 you know, obviously this is public forum and the place to, to, to flush that out. But I, I don't, I don't think they're here tonight. And I don't, I, I do not know about any, any uh, problems with them at this point. And, and the only other, I guess, question or concern I would have if there's, you know, and again, this would probably be more vetted at the planning board level, but is there any, thoughts or concerns for public safety in regards to, you know, if there's going to be any increase in traffic or, you know, in the such, um, but it appears that it's more, yeah. that it's more seasonal and not, in, not necessarily a, a peak time in and out thing, but a, I guess a random in and out type thing. That's true. That's true. And very true. Um, you know, we, I will speak with John about his options with the traffic study and, and the value of that at the planning board meeting. And, and, and um, it, I, I probably will recommend that he does do some limited traffic study because my gut feeling is that he, he won't affect the level of service ever in route nine and middle road. I, I, I don't see any, any level of service issues now and the timing of his traffic he can control so I, I really i i feel that he won't have a problem with traffic um but it would be best to have a, a small traffic study done and 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 have a you know a, a consultant demonstrate that so and john and i will discuss the options with that and and um it, it for it, it would be it would be worth providing that data so we, we'll we'll consider a traffic study that's 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 all I have. Thank you. No, uh, Paul, I can I can speak quickly to that too. Um, well, two of the concerns. Our current building in Angeles, we uh, we're right off of. You, you may not know the area too well, but uh, there's, there's a pretty uh, heavy traffic route called Route 114, and um, and our street is similar to this situation where we're um, you know we're on a side street off of 114. We're even during a heavy snowstorm, we're, we're only running probably 25 to 30 vehicles out of the operation. And they come, you know, they come out uh, at staggered times and they're, they're gone for, you know, four hours, eight hours, 10 hours. So it's not like they're coming in and out of, you know, a million times during the, during the event. Um, and as far as the, uh, the person next door, uh, I can't remember her last name, or, uh, but her name is Sandy. Um, nice lady. I've, had several conversations with her and we're actually planning to rent a little space out, off of her um, while we're doing, you know, getting the project going. Um, so she's been, she's been pretty good. Um, I don't, you know, she's here tonight and I actually 
beyond the abutters um, notification, I, I called her and left her a message and mentioned for her to, to come on today. To, so uh, my, my situation is I've been in two towns in the past, I've been in Danvers now for about 10 years. And I mentioned to the, to, you know, to many of the folks at town hall already in Salisbury, I said, you know, I've never gone, sorry, my lights went out. Um, I don't go into a town um, pushing my way in. I, I want to come in and, we, you know, we want the town to want us to be there and, and that includes the residents. So, um, so that's our position. All right, thanks, John. Um, Debbie, did you have questions? Hi, hi there. Yep, I do. I just a couple of questions. Um, thanks for mentioning how many trucks go in and out. I said mentioned 25 to 30. I was interested in the landscaping when it's off season, the other seasons. Is it less than that or about how many trucks um, a day coming in and out for typical landscaping during the other sure. seasons? Sure. Um, so in our current location, which is, so we're not, uh, to be frank, we're not even sure yet if we're going to uh, run landscaping out of this property. We're, we're absolutely focused on the snow side of things. Um, we just don't want to limit ourselves and say we're not going to at all. I can tell you in year one and two, it's very unlikely we'll run uh, much landscaping at all out of there. Uh, but our, at our peak uh, service level right now in Danvers, we're running about 15 trucks. So it's about half. And, uh, and then there's obviously some office staff that come in. And the office staff is, for the most part, they come into the building and they're here for eight hours. Uh, there are a few office staff that will go in and out to check on the crews. And, you know, we call them um, account managers and field operations managers. So they'll come in and out throughout the day, but probably two or three times. Thank you. And, and how about the lighting? So when you, during a big storm, I saw in the picture at Danvers, you had a big light. Would it be lit up also here in Southboro? Yeah, um, we would definitely have some lighting because, you know, we want to have safety. It's what you saw there was a um, couple of salt sheds and, and those, those salt sheds are lit so that the trucks can get loaded in the sheds. Um, it's very similar to what the DPW next door has, um, likely that that's lit up as well. Uh, but in, here in Danvers, uh, we have some res we actually have some abutting residential um, to our current location. And I mean, like, you know, within uh, 50 feet or you not know, maybe 150 feet. Um, and we're very careful to make sure that our lighting is positioned in a way that it's not going to be offensive to the neighbors. So we would um, we would do the same thing. Through the chair, I'd like to expand a little on that. Um, when we get to the planning board stage, we will have likely have to um, provide a lighting plan to the planning board and we will um, get a photogrammetric plan done and with um, lumens of intensity and, and we will try to have zero overspill at the property line. Definitely, we won't have an overspill of light onto someone else's property. So we'll be able to design and control that and limit the, the overspill to, 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 you know, to focus in the light where it belongs on our, on our property. And, and, uh, and then we will be providing detail in that at the planning board stage. Thank you. And just one question, because um, you have a, a farm that's nearby and I'm just curious about the salt near the farm um, where the salt area would be, is that going to be near the farm or did you speak to the person who owns the farm? Any concerns? Sounds like uh, on, you reached out already and nothing. The, yeah, we, well, on, on the salt, we, we have, uh, we have to be careful to design the salt shed in a fashion. So the salt stays in the shed and no water enters the shed or leaves the shed. And then there's only salt that would be on the property would be what would be on any other property, just minimal salt used for to, 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 uh, from a snowstorm. So basically we are gonna control the salt and keep it in the shed. And that's what the shed is for. So the salt should never leave the, leave the, the building and, and, we'll, and we'll design the, the grades so such that the water doesn't ever, the runoff never enters the shed. And, and therefore we'll control the potential pollution from the from the salt to prevent that. Thanks, thank De you very much. And Deborah, just to expand a little bit on that. Um, I'm So I'm kind of a geek with this stuff. I, I love what I do. So I travel the country in the summer to, you know, people that have a bigger business than mine. And, 
and um, and I try to learn from those those people. And I'm on the, um, you probably never heard of it. I wouldn't expect you to, but there's, um, there's an association called the Snow and Ice Management Association. Uh, that's, you know, national association. I'm, I'm on the board of directors. I'm the vice chair. Uh, I've been serving for five years. And there is um, a gentleman by the name of uh, Phil, Phil Sexton, who owns a company called Wit Advisors. And Wit Advisors focuses on the reduction of chloride uh, across the country. And we're, we're part of a pilot uh, study that's been trying to reduce chlorides, uh, not just with, you know, within our own business, but also for large corporations. So Wegmans has a chloride reductions, um, you know, uh, um, goal by within the next 10 years to reduce it to almost zero. And we're one of Wegmans uh, partners that's, that's helping them get there. So, so we're, we're sensitive to it. We've got good advisors there and obviously we'll abide by what what the town and what the code shares as well, you know, it tells us to do, so. Great, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, Mike Robbins? Um, yeah, a lot of the points have been covered by the other members, lighting, um, traffic going to and from Middle Road, access off of Route 9. The one thing I do wanna to touch base on is I see that the parking laws is away from Route 9, at least the, that's how it appears to me in, in the slide in front of me. And so I just, again, want to be very conscious of trucks parking there, the noise associated that's going to kick back likely to more towards the back of Middle Road. So I'm just conscious of that concern. So the to, to explain, Route, Route 9 is, is out here, and yeah. we've got um, a buffer of, the, of, of a, a waterway and then some woods, and then we'll have a retaining wall here, and then we'll also have our own buildings between us. So any residential, there's, there's a house I probably should have put it on the plan, and I, and I can. Um, is, this The farmhouse is way out here, yeah. and, and this is all wooded here. And then the DPW is here. So we really have no residential butters, but but for this one farmhouse. And we're a good distance away. So, you know, clearly we'll have to be sensitive to the, 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 the noise at night and this, this storm event. But it, it, he's, he had That's the exactly good part good. is there's a, a building's buffer. And the, see this retaining wall here? This is a proposed wall. And that's going to create a four foot grade difference. So the cut vehicles are going to drive down and around here and then park down gradient here. Now, then a loader can pull into the salt shed, back up, load the truck. But all that is going to be going on down down in a gully below a, a heavy retaining wall. Then a, in the building itself and another building. Uh, so all that sound ballast is going to, going to create, a, 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 a take whatever decibel level here, diminish it severely by the time it reaches here. So, you know, we, we do need safety. So we'll have still have a backup alarm, but that's really the loudest thing is going to be a backup alarm. And um, we, we certainly can, um, um, Mark, so we don't have any other noise. Mark, in addition to that, we've we converted all of our backup alarms here to a quelch. So it, it's not your typical, like you hear the beep beep uh, that, you know, has always been a typical backup alarm. There's now um, a new form that doesn't, um, that sound doesn't travel as far. It sounds like, Excellent. I, I have no better way to explain it than it sounding like someone stuck, stuck on a duck, but it's like a quelch sound. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I've heard it. So yeah, that so, is better. So those alarms that he's, John's right, that that sound isn't going to travel like, like, a, like a conventional backup alarm. So it sounds like he's, he's already doing the right thing in his other facility so we can do you could impose a condition he has those alarms or or if he, he's already doing it i, I that's, that, that sounds good and it's not just um because of the other facility but because of our snow and ice uh, operations we we work in a lot of areas where there'll be a retail center or something and there'll be you know have a lot of residential butters so that's why we have those you know those style alarms but they're in all of our vehicles and I, I don't know if, if um, I'm cautious about speaking for Mike, but I think he might be looking where you can see the obvious parking spaces. I'm assuming that's employee parking yeah, right there. Yeah. Yes. That's right. John, you're going to park yeah. employees here. And then this, honestly, this parking here is just to comply with the bylaw. You know, he doesn't have that many, par that much parking needs. He, he clearly has enough room for 
all the parking he would need to comply with the bylaw. But but for what is what he expects, uh, really a couple cars here, and then with this the size of this building, most all the trucks. Uh, I John, how many did you figure? Twelve can get inside here, or no uh, more than that. It's it should hold close to twenty. That that's we, 20 we like to keep all our small trucks. In, yeah, we like to keep all of our trucks inside the building, um, and that's that's the uh, intention. And 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 maybe you know this will be a subject for another meeting tonight. But um, I, I think I think he might have been asking about idling. That you know, as long as you're not exposed to some neighbors and the, the right, trucks are right. sitting there idling for a long time. Yep. No, yeah, I, we don't we don't have any need for that. Other than a truck waiting for another truck to get salt, but it's not going to idle for more more than a couple of minutes. Then tops. And, okay. Yep. And the other, um, just to be make everyone aware, about half of our fleet's been converted to gas. Uh, so we're use we don't use like triaxle, you know, size trucks. We use what, what's called large six wheel trucks. So they're they're not the you know massive state triaxle type trucks that you'll see. They're the largest six wheel. Um, okay. I can't say that there, there won't be uh, any diesels there. There there likely will be, but we've converted half our fleet over to gas just because it's a cheaper alternative than the diesels. Yeah, and on, on that note, John told me we were talking about the method of salt control. He he's he, all his trucks are electric sander controls too, so they're not hydraulic. So that those all that every every salt truck that has a hydraulic controller, that's a potential oil spill. He doesn't have the oil. He's using all okay. all electric. So it's it's okay. a, it's a good good operation. Um, Mike, did you have more questions, or you seemed like you might have been interrupted? No, thank you. Um, that's, that's my point. Okay. Are you set then? Or? I am. Okay. Great. Um, Great. Craig? One other thing, just to share kind of uh, a little bit of my uh, somewhat craziness probably, is uh, we do we do keep this this site here um, in Danvers up, it, you know, really run a tight ship. And um we literally will have almost every week we'll have a site tour through the facility. And um, I don't tell my, my operations team when they're coming and I do it on purpose because I tell them that it should be, you know, in a place that a site tour can come through anytime. Um, but we've had, you know, Curd Coffee, Lady Hospital. Um, recently we had Kimco, you know, you may or may not have heard of them, but there's a lot of large companies that tour our, our facilities regularly. And, um, and we plan to do the same with Saltboro. So we want to have that facility in good condition so that, you know, one, we'll obviously keep, keep it in good condition just because that's the way I want to have it. I want it to be uh, clean and I don't want a property that's going to be devaluing. Um, and again, want to obviously keep everyone around us happy, but, but in, further than that, um, we want to have it in a, in a clean and um, kind of like a showpiece so that when our clients do come through or our prospects come through or, our, or a potential um, team members come through, they, they want to either use our service or they want to, you know, work for our team. So, so I'm, you know, our team knows I've, I've probably um, pushed it too far that we're, we run a pretty clean operation. Okay. Thank you. Craig, do you have questions? Um, most of them have been addressed. I think um, I'm trying to see if it's clearly defined, but um, just to verify, you're not running into any issues in terms of FAR maxes or setbacks or anything like that, right? I mean, building setbacks for the, for the, for the, we, we okay, we, we do, if you look close at the, let me try to make it a little bigger so you can look at the setback lines. So, see this dotted line right here? That's the, that's the 50 foot set back so okay. we, we, we we comply with our proposed building we can probably comply with the proposed um solid shed even with a couple feet to spare so we're not right up against the lot line the only thing and i, I do should point this out because you asked that um the as a zoning table right here we, we um the existing property the, the required frontage is 200 feet and it exists at 161 16 but it's an existing lot of record and we're not subdividing it. And, we're, and then a building inspector didn't yep. seem to think that was an issue. So that we just, this is, we just want to point that out that we, we have to fish on frontage, but it's a, 
pre-existing non-conforming. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then um, yeah, this is the table, 50, 50, 50, 45 foot max height with two stories. We're going to be in the 20s. So um, we, we, we're, we're good on all that. Great. Thank you. That's it for me. All right, um, I, Mark, I, I, the, they, I think the board's asked good questions here, so I don't have much. Just maybe a little bit about what, what's the plan on the retaining wall? How, how, how high will that be? It's, it's a pretty good wall. Um, it, it's, it's 15, basically goes from zero, about eight, 15 at its highest. Okay. And then um, internally, we have a high wall here for this pond. And I don't know, I'm going to, I have still need to do test pits for the groundwater here. This pond may not be as deep and we, we'll, we're working on this, but that, uh, as far as the perimeter wall, it's max height is um, 18 feet. And what's the material? Um, it's going to be large, large uh, block, heavy gravity wall, and um, we're going to design it for for um, for varying capacity, for sliding, for overturning. The soils here are tremendously good, uh, well drained soils, um, so okay. we don't see any problem with the water or drainage. Or poor, you know, really, what, what makes a wall tend to fail is poor soils, a couple of groundwater behind the wall. So a versalock type wall, even that though uh, it, it, by design, it should 20 feet should be fine. You see them pushing over, it's because when you get plastic, high plasticity soils with groundwater against it. Here we have very well-drained, no fines, and we'll make sure to build good drainage behind the wall and use tie back. And, but, but that being said, we still will propose the, the gravity wall as the wall solution because it, it, the, 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 the factor of safety will be tenfold. So it, it really okay. strong walls. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, that was about all I had. I don't know, I don't know if uh, anybody, any, any of the board members had some follow-up questions after, after those rounds. I, I have a question just on the traffic real quick. Go ahead, Jamie. Um, again, this might be more planning board, but my only concern is that not as much the height of the storm, but I know I see these trucks out a lot kind of pre a major storm and post a major storm. And a lot of people use that middle road to make a right onto route nine and there's no light there. So I just wonder about traffic backup for potential Southboro commuters, especially with it being bigger trucks, it's not easier for them to make a quick turn if they're waiting um, for an open space in the traffic. So that, that to me, when I'm looking at this, that was more my concern um, than the building itself. That, that's just where my thought process is. I know that um, where the DPW is, they come out, there are some traffic lights there, and then there's also the entrances to Route 9, so it's a little bit easier for them. I just want to make sure that residents aren't going to be backed up on that middle road. Yeah, and, and again, I, I think there's going to be some value. Thank, thank you. I hope I didn't interrupt you. We, 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 there's going to be some value to, to a traffic study to, to help address that at the planning board stage. And we and um, and then I recommend John does it. And, and it just it basically, with the way his um, the, his truck count. And this, the, the size, then all he's going to be using all small vehicles, you know, pickup trucks with sanders in them, not not big um, triaxle heavy heavy trucks like the state and town use. And when then when he deploys them, they're going to go to far away destinations and then separately. And then when they come back, they're going to straggle back. It's not going to be an army of trucks coming and going. The and and, and it's not like a DPW where they would traditionally. Um, get the salt go out and sand salt the road do the intersections come back stand by and wait and idle and wait for the snow to build and then go back to the road route he his his routes are the parking lots that he's going to for his private customers that he so the only reason to come back here would either be to you know park the truck because it's done or to get another load of salt and or, and or, you know, switch an employee, but it's not going to be where the, they're, they're roaming in and out of here 
all night long. It's, it's going to, and when they do come in, it's going to be not, not as a group. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking more about not even at night, but like rush hour, you know, when people are mostly traveling, that happened to be when they needed to be there. Um, well, okay. and, and if it was a storm event during rush hour, it, you know, and I, I, I drove a plow truck for the state. That's the worst thing that can happen. They, they, the, the, Car, trucks are all cars are all on the road and no one can the plows and the salt can't get on the road and the traffic jam is there and you have to wait for the cars to go to plow but it, again if that happened john's truck would just be another car in the traffic jam he wouldn't be trying to you know and, and, and again what could it, would he contribute to that traffic jam I don't think so. And that's what the traffic study would have to show. You know, if the level of service is F on the road because of a traffic jam, then he's not making it worse. If it's if it's D and his trucks make it F, then he'd have to mitigate. But I don't I don't see um, that, that, that happening. I, I understand. I'm not worried about Route 9. I'm worried about making the right. Right. I understood. I, yeah. And I again, I, I think um, Middle Road won't. Well, would likely not be the issue is route nine would be the backed up road and it's funny you, you because when I, the story i just told you about getting the the the, the, the truck being stuck in the traffic and that was on route nine on that section but on the other side i applied for the state and, and it, that 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 typical situation happened right there it's funny that the coincidence but middle road isn't contributing to that it's the uh, that hill on route nine going Westbound is will get could back up, but the roads that collect the streets heading into Route Nine aren't causing the backup. The Route Nine itself could could back up. Yeah, I, I can share too. Um, the the uh, just again, uh, it, so when we dispatch out of here, first off, um, almost all in that when I speak, I'm speaking to Dan right now because it's a very similar setup, and we will it'll probably be quite a few years till we get to the capacity that Danvers is at, but. Um, but when we dispatch out of Danvers, I like to say, you know, almost all of our work is done when everyone else is sleeping. So even for, to, you know, to your point about rush hour, we're very proactive. So we have a, we subcontract a meteorologist that's on staff 24 hours, um, you know, throughout the events. And, and we have our people glued to the weather. So if we hear anything about a potential, you know, rush hour event, which is as Mark said, the worst event we could possibly deal with. Um, our, our crews are leaving here at like two in the morning. They're not, they're not waiting till five or six to get out because they know they're going to have to hit their route proactively. Um, the other thing too, we, we definitely would be coming back to reload here and there, but we also have about 30 other salt sheds throughout Massachusetts. So our trucks, um, this would be a, a you know primary branch location, meaning that we have office there and we have equipment store there and everything else but what we do is we set up you know we set up salt uh, sheds on a lot of our sites we manage so for instance like Leahy Hospital in Burlington, Leahy Hospital in Beverly we have sheds there so the trucks go in and out of there to get their salt then they go to the next place they'll, they'll salt that location they'll pick up salt at the next place and keep going on um, so it's Mark Mark's right um, you know we, we're not going to see you know 15 trucks lined up on middle road uh, at six in the morning. I, I totally can understand where you think that, but that's, that shouldn't be the case at all. Okay. Thank you. That was, that was my question. Great. Great. And I, I just wanted to add, uh, John, probably, I, I, I mean, I think the traffic study is, is certainly a good, a good thing to have for the planning board. Uh, I will say though, uh, the question about that Debbie had regarding what, what goes on when it's not, you know, snow season when it's just regular landscaping season, I would imagine you're going to have to have some firm numbers rather because uh, you just, you sound kind of vague on what the numbers are. I would just expect you'd probably have to commit to a, a number for that, that traffic study for the planning board. Sure. No, good point. Yeah. Well, and, and in that case, we would um, design for Max build out what is, what, what he would think would be the optimum and, and and then if we make sure that we can um we don't impact the traffic in that situation if he does less then that's great for the community if he does more and it doesn't impact anything but that's what we have to demonstrate that what is um the capacity of the facility that as as we designed it okay. 
just like the septic system. We might only use 50 gallons a day. We're going to design for a thousand gallons a day because right. someone could use all that, you know, so. Understood. Yep. All right. Um, uh, Debbie, do we have any, any, any abutters, any, anybody from the public who wants to speak? That was for Katie, right? I'm sorry, Katie. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Debbie. Uh, that's okay. I, I can't see any <laughs> hands raised at the moment. Um, and I didn't receive any um, letters of support or, or not, so. Okay. Um, right. David, I had a small question. Sure, Doris. I'll make it fast. Um, I don't know if Mark or, or John can answer it. The driveway itself, I've dro driven up the driveway. Can, can that actually accommodate a truck on each side to pass each other? And will there be lighting on it? or improve lighting? Or are they gonna to have to put their truck lights on basically? It's a long driveway, it's really quite set back, the site. It, it is, I, uh, Mark can probably better speak to if you can pass on both sides. I believe you can, but I don't wanna say that. Um, yeah, without... I've been up, it, would look, it looked a little tight. Right. So that would mean only one or two things. They rarely pass each other, which would be great, um, which would be unlikely sometimes, or they would be turning around in front of the, existing building at the bottom, it, which seemed a little narrow. Mark probably can answer it quickly, just a design, because you said the driveway was adequate. Is it actually wide enough for two trucks, a mod those modest sized trucks to pass each other on each side? The driveway doesn't have a- Yeah, it, it gets driveway. narrow. It's- um, it does. I, I, Sorry, I just I had to bug out my seven-year-old daughter came home and demanded to see me. I had to explain them in a That's meeting. Okay. I, um, I'm, you know, I, I anticipated this question. I measured it last time I went to the property and, and it's, um, by my memory, 17 feet at the narrowest and, and it's up 20 feet plus at its widest. Um, is that enough for two cars to pass? Yes, it's, you know, optimally it would be 18, but this shoulder width on both sides and, um, it's and it's only right right at the culvert so this site distance you'd see the other and this and then it winds up across here this parking so yeah, it's, not, some, it's not driveway yeah so if you're coming down here and and you see a car coming you just wait here a second the guy goes by, by. Okay, just, if, okay, this is a good alternate to being backed up at the there you is, wouldn't even there see is. them if you're in the upper lot except for the lighting if there's yeah. lights showing yeah. at night yeah. Mm. Yeah, but what what uh, once you come around here, you can see, it, and then there is a, a a little parking area right here that you could wait. And then the same thing, you're coming down here. Just when you get to here, you'd see a car coming across there, and then you know, it, it, and if they if neither saw each other and they both came at the same time, it's still wide enough for cars six six seven feet. It's seventeen feet. There's okay. room, you know, so they can get by each other. It's just not. <laughs> They wouldn't want to go by 35 miles an hour past each other, but it's a slow, slow drive. And his, he can instruct all his drivers to maintain five mile an hour, 10 mile an hour across. And, um, and, he, and then other than that, there's really no other traffic, you know, except for this building. And she would never be coming at night. So it, it's the only this access, this common drive is only for this property and this property. And, and they, and their, and their time of, peak travel will be different. So we likely won't encounter each other. It'll be his own trucks he might encounter, which then they can have a policy. The other um, the other good thing is, and, and Doris, I, I know, you know, that was something that I noted when I was looking at the property. The, the One of the good things is, it is um, one of the good things about that passage is, um, I can't point because it's, I, I wish I could. But yeah, yeah Mark, yes. the other side yeah. of that, the other side of that road, it's it's all cleared, so so you get good visibility. Um, yeah, this is wetland, road. so you, there's no the, you can you have side side distance, but it, it's not the the road doesn't go across here because the wetland juts out there and it crosses it in a couple of places. And what I mean by that is there's no like thick thick trees or tall brush or you know it's you can see quite a distance, especially if you're in a truck because you're up higher. Yeah. It's, Okay. Doris? No, I just had a question. The, the other thing got answered with the site visit was, I was like, where are you, how are you squeezing those buildings in when I looked at the site? But the plan explains it. 
I mean, we're right on the, you know, we're about back from the offsets, but we're filling every last foot up. Um, and it makes sense, you know, as it has, because then when you go to the, the backside and the wetlands, and now that I see the retaining wall, you know, what we're going to do about that? Because it really, it steeps off in different areas because of the adjoining wetland. But no, it's a really nice presentation. I appreciate it. it my yeah. question was how you getting up and down the driveway. And, um, and you're going to do a traffic study, which will help. Yes. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if the if the board is if everybody's answered had their questions answered and we don't have anybody anyone else from the public who wants to who wants to speak, uh, we could probably entertain a, a motion to to close the, the public hearing. David, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right. Thank you. Um, who was the second? Paul. Oh, Paul. Okay, thanks, Paul. Um, actually, uh, could you stop sharing for now, um, Mark? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. All right. So, um, all right. Any any additional concerns from any any board members? I think we've, we've there's been a lot of questions. It was a good presentation. They, they've answered lots a lot of questions. Um, it, I, I'm going to say that it, it does feel the temperature of the board is generally positive. Go ahead, Mike. Just a point of order. Uh, do we need to vote on the... Oh, correct. We do. We had a, we had Thank a, you for that. A motion. Right. Uh, a motion with a second to close the public hearing. All in favor, respond with, uh, with aye uh, for the sitting members. Uh, Paul? Aye. Craig? Aye. Debbie? Aye. Mike? Aye. Williams, aye. Okay. So that, that will close the public meeting. Public portion of the meeting, thank you for the reminder, Mike. Um, again, uh, are there additional concerns we want to debate here? Uh, um, uh, I think it's good to keep in mind that they are going to be going for the planning board. Um, they are, it sounds to me, they're committing to a traffic study. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be more detail with the planning board in regards to lighting and the, and the traffic. So um, we can discuss further or we can take a motion to, for a vote. Um, I guess the only, the only question is whether we put a condition for them to do the traffic study. Um, right. And, you know, do a traffic study and confirm that it doesn't have a greater than 10% impact as per 10%, right? Um, yeah, I think 10% is, is the, yeah, that is the number. I think that's, that would be reasonable. I mean, if they're planning to do it anyway, I don't, I don't see that that would, that would be a problem. I, I, I don't have a problem with that, John. I think we should, we should commit to that. Yeah, strictly uh, strictly speaking, we do we have a we have closed the public meeting. It gets oh, kind I of funky. Apologize, so, apologize. <laughs> you, you that, that's correct, okay, sir. That's okay. Um, this this no. part gets kind of funny. That's why you're, we're always kind of a little cautious about when we close. But um, so yeah, so I would move that we grant the special permit with the condition that the applicant conducts a traffic or a yeah a traffic study that and confirms that it shows a less than 10% impact. I'll second that. All right. All right, we have a motion to confirm the, the special permit with a condition for a traffic study to show less than 10% impact. All in favor, uh, respond with aye. Uh, Paul? Aye. Craig? Aye. Debbie? Amiria, aye. Uh, Michael? Aye. And, and Williams, aye. All right. So, All right. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Permits and approved. And um, good luck at your next board. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, it was a pleasure luck. meeting everyone. I Thank you very much. We'll Take care, everyone. Right. Thank you. Talk to you later. Take care.
So, our next agenda item is, um, where are we here? Let me get that back. 16 Clifford Road, special permit to allow an accessory apartment. Katie, do you want to, before we continue, does anybody for any reason need a, a, a short um, recess or are we good to continue? I think we're good for this one. Okay. All right, Katie, do you want to read the, the uh, petition uh, for 16 Clifford Road? Yes. The Board of Appeals of the Town of Southboro will hold a public hearing via virtual Zoom meeting on Wednesday, May 19th, 2021 at 7 15 p.m. with regard to the petition of Jason Kurtz, Kurtz Design Studio LLC, 16 Clifford Road, Southboro, Mass. The petitioner is seeking a special permit to allow an accessory apartment within the existing footprint of a single family residence in existence for more than two years in the Residence A district. Relief is requested under Section 174.82B1. Good. All right. And um, thank you, Katie. Do we, do we have somebody to present for the, the applicant? So, David, can I? Ask, um, ask how we might like to proceed here. Um, one of the things that they were supposed to submit is a, a letter from the planning board that they have not submitted yet. Correct. Um, and I, I would imagine they'll address this in their uh, presentation, but their Board of Health letter says it's okay as long as they don't add another bedroom, which it clearly looks like they are. Right. So I'm wondering if, you know, once the applicant gets started that um, I, they might want to continue this to get at least the planning board one resolved. Yeah. If they already have the Board of Health one. Yeah, we, we, we did. I, that was talked about. And I think we decided we're, we should do the presentation. We know they have to go to the planning board. They will have to. There will have to be a continuance to come back to us. But Katie, you were going to add something regarding the the, the bedroom, right? Well, yeah, I talked to um, Dennis from the Board of Health, and he said um, he did clarify that four bedrooms were okay here. Okay, so I, they can do the presentation. I just didn't know if we wanted to address those up front. I know that, that that's a good point, Greg. Specifically, no, that, it, it, I think. Ultimately, we, I think what we'll have to do, even though you know, we go through a presentation, I think ultimately it's gonna to have to be a continuance because they've got to go to the planning board. The planning board needs to submit a letter to us and then we can, that's when we can, we can officially close it. Um, then may I make the suggestion that I, our next item is looking like it might be lengthy. Uh, the first item took quite a long time. If we're going to have to continue it and have them back anyway, then maybe it makes sense for the presentation to occur at that time, just to keep things moving. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's if, they're, if they're open to that option, obviously they have to agree to it, but that would be my... Right. That's a good yeah. suggestion. Um, Katie, do you want to allow, allow the applicant in? Can everyone hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Jason Kurtz. I am the applicant for uh, my client um, who lived at 16 Clifford. Um, it sounds like you don't want to have the presentation because of the uh, requiring the planning board to approve prior to getting in front of you. Um, the, the, the one caveat I would ask is uh, it was brought to our attention on the 17th, two days ago, that the planning board was going to be required um, to be presented to, and it, it wasn't brought to our attention until then, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, obviously has left us uh, a little bit in a quandary since we submitted all the documents four, four weeks ago. All right. Well, I, I, I think the bottom line, Jason, is even if you go ahead and do the full presentation here, 
you still have to go to the planning board. You still have to come back to us. So I think there isn't a, there isn't an opportunity to um, approve with contingency that the planning board approves, since we're 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 meeting with them on Monday. Right. Right. Understood. Um, the, the, the procedures I understand it is we need to get the letter from the planning board. So it's not really following the process if we go out of order, as far as that goes. I, I know what you're saying, David, but I, I you know, uh, if the petitioner is here, otherwise they're yeah. going to be late another month. Well, I, I mean, I, I think, I think the larger point is that it's actually, it's actually, we can't force a continuance. That's up to the applicant to be able to do that. So if you, you know, really, if you wanna go ahead and, and, and present, you may. I think we are just asking just in the matter of time because we know we've got a longer hearing ahead of us. Um, if you want, if, if just in this, for the sake of time, it would make sense, more sense to do it later. Um, if you wanna do it now, we can, well, I don't know. If he wants to do it now, he absolutely can. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to give a presentation now and you're not going to be able to rule on it. So, I mean, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm a little bit caught off guard since it wasn't brought to our attention that we needed to go the other direction first. So uh, I would prefer not to have to present and then come back to you and present again. Okay. So um, again, the, the board can't can't request this, but are you requesting then to continue? I, I, we're obviously going to have to because there's no sense in presenting if we can't get an answer. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, not to be too the pedantic, but could you just, if you just. Oh, can we get a, can we get a uh, continuance, please? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, all right. And, and Katie, what do we have um, on the schedule for our next meeting? Um, we have one, potentially two hearings, but we can do, we can do this one first on the 16th. 16th of June. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we need a motion to accept the continuance to June 16th at 7 p.m.? I believe so. Then I so move that. Second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion to continue the hearing until June 16th with a second. All in favor, say aye. Mike? Aye. aye. Paul? Aye. Debbie? Aye. Craig? Aye. And Williams, aye. All right. Um, uh, thanks, Jason. Uh, sorry about the, about the confusion. Um, we should be able to continue it to the 16th at, at 7. And then I'm pretty sure you'll need to drop by the, the office and get with Katie to officially sign the continuance paperwork. All right. All right, thank you. Thank you, sorry. Okay, so that brings us to the fun part. Uh, 325 Turnpike Road, Ken's Food Special Permit. Um, this at this point, since we are going, getting into the longer one, I would request a five minute recess. Do we need to vote on a recess or I can just, we just grant it, right? I think you can just grant it. Okay. Uh, five minutes sufficient, Craig? I, it is for me. I don't know about anybody else. Okay. All right. Yep. We'll resume at, uh, in five minutes at 822. All right. Thanks.
All right. Well, we just need Katie. Oh, she's back. All right, are we ready to continue? Uh, so Debbie, are you recusing? Yes, I'm recusing. Okay. Uh, Doris, I, you were not, you were uh, sitting on the, on the board the last time, so we'll nominate you to uh, step in for Debbie. You're on mute, Doris. Doris? Doris, you're on mute. You're on mute. And in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on, okay, I'm unmuted now. I have a resolution issue, so I took my fake background down. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've noticed those kind of things before. Mm -hmm. All right, so Debbie has recused herself. Doris is in. Um, do you need to read the, the public notice again, Katie? I don't think so, because it was continued. So. Okay. Is that right? All right, I get I get fuzzy on the procedural issues. Quite honestly, you haven't picked up on that yet. <laughs> um, all right, so you know at, at, at where we left off last last time, they have uh, an application for a special permit to do an expansion on the east side of the building. Uh, the majority of the concern from abutters was regarding uh, noise considerations on the west side of the building. Um, uh, Mike Robbins and I actually had a tour provided by, hosted by Ken's, which was actually very, very helpful to understand where the, the issue is coming from. Um, but, um, and I, I believe the way we left it was that Ken's was going to continue to work with the abutters, with the neighbors that were having an issue. So, um, if we want to let somebody from Ken's in here, Katie, I, don't know, I think we should first see if they have something more to present or discuss. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Bazzoni. I am the attorney for Ken's Foods. Uh, I actually have been between before this board. I think this is my fifth time for this site. Uh, and this fourth permit in the last five years. Uh, first of all, I did notice something on this special permit application and it dawned on me because a couple of people in their letters recently have said, spoken about the facility as a manufacturing facility. It is not manufacturing. Ken's does not do any manufacturing there. It is only wholesale distribution and storage. Uh, and I just wanted to clear that up uh, right away. Uh, secondly, I, I did reach out uh, after our meeting at the site uh, to Deb, uh, asked her if she'd call me back. Uh, but then I got a letter from her lawyer, which <laughs> now I have to speak with him. And, and that's fine. And I saw a letter from him and from a peer review study that was done or a company that uh, facilitated what they considered a peer review. And uh, I did speak to the lawyer today to tell him that we would continue to work with them, continue to talk with them. And in fact, this, the noise issue is really, a, it's a separate issue from the special permit. The special permits for an extension on the other end of the building it's going to have really no impact to the outside of the building or any further noise at the site. The noise issue is an, an issue that, number one, is regulated by state and DEP. Uh, South Road does not have a noise ordinance, so it would have to be through the, the state procedure. Uh, we've been, you know, we've always said we've been happy to work and try to assess what a situ this problem is or a situation is. Uh, when we did the first expansion, uh, we actually built a sound wall 
even though we knew that after we moved all of the, uh, the doors, it probably wasn't going to be necessary anything any further, but we, we understood the issues that, that came from the community. Uh, what I would, do want to revert back to, though, is we have an issue before you for a special permit to add an addition on the back side, the east side of the building, with no further traffic or any other noise outside of the facility, other than what's existing there today. Uh, there's not going to be any increased truck traffic. In fact, there's going to be some traffic that's going to be eliminated that was coming from CAMS, their operation in Marlboro, on a daily basis because of what they had to do for the restocking and the stacking at the Ken's facility. So any increase in traffic that might be going in and out, moving material uh, for the, uh, from the storage and for distribution is going to be outweighed by the reduction in flow of traffic from Ken's main facility to the current facility. Uh, I, I think I reiter uh, said this the last time. I was a bit remiss because when we heard about this issue, which the first complaints came 18 months after Ken's started full operation under their facility, uh, had not heard anything. And I finally heard something from uh, one of the abutters reached out to us. He happened to work for a firm that we represent, my firm represents. And he said, look, I'm hearing this noise. I want to talk to Ken's. I know you represent them. Can you come and talk to me? So I went and talked to him. And that was Chuck Agadon. He was at 28. And Deb was at, at 58. They both raised some issues. And they called the police there a couple of times without success in hearing things. Uh, one time, I think they did hear something one night. So it's, it's clearly an intermittent issue. So we met with them. We talked with them. And we said, all right, we, we believe we've identified the issue that you think you're hearing. And they're may be causing this, is the refrigeration. And Deb and Chuck agreed that's what we would focus on. And that's what that report did. It focused on the sound being emanated from the refrigeration, which is what everybody thought the issue was. Our guy looked at it. He extrapolated what he needed to do. And by the way, our expert, he does do work for the federal government on noise. He does a lot of work around the country. And he stands by his report. Of course, it didn't comply with the, as their peer review reviewer looked at it and said, oh, it doesn't comply with this standard and that standard. Well, that's because we were trying to extrapolate the noise issue around just the uh, refrigeration units. Because I have an email from that Deb was on and that Chuck Hagerman was on was, OK, everybody thinks this is the issue. This is what the focus is going to be. This is what our report is going to go, go look at. Okay? Everybody was happy with it, or happy with us moving on that. And again, we had said to them, it's not our obligation to do this, but we're trying to be a good neighbor. We'll do the study as long as we know what we're focusing on. Okay? So we did the study. I sent it to Deb. I sent it to Chuck. I went back and forth with them a little bit, uh, asked, sent them July 1st, I remember it, and I got the email, an email saying, look, I'm going in for surgery. I'll be out of pocket for a week. I think we should get together with the sound expert. If you have somebody you want to bring, let's sit and talk about this and find out what's going on. I did not hear another thing from anybody. I called the building inspector this past January before I started putting together my application to come in and asked if there had been any further complaints from anybody. She said no, that they hadn't heard anything. So I'm thinking, OK, we resolved the issue because after the sound study, Ken's even took steps to face the trucks in a different direction, to try to capture the sound and have it stay on, on site. Uh, it wasn't until I, I actually called Deb just before I was filing, and I said, look, I just want to give you a heads up. You're going to get noticed because you're in a butter, even though you're 1,800 feet away. You're in a butter, and you know uh, we're still willing to try to work with you if this hasn't been resolved. She told me it had started to reoccur over the winter. And I think we heard from her husband at the last meeting that when the snow pile was built up 
on that west side, they had an, a, like a recess from it. There was no, they didn't hear the sound for several days or a month. And maybe that blocked it. When we left the last meeting, I said, look, I'll talk to Ken's about possibly planting trees, doing a mound there, and putting some trees in the area where that snow dump was basically, to maybe to take that effect in the winter where it's evergreens and minimize it. Uh, I, I'm kind of exasperated because Ken's has been a, a really good community uh, business owner. They want to fit in. They have a, a facility that's on Route 9. <laughs> it's actually a lot less noisy than it was when Verizon was there, when I, was, when I first moved to South Pro and the activity that was going on there then. But I think we need to, we need to look at this in, in two veins. Number one, we, put, we have an application before you for a special permit to add an addition that's innocuous on the other end. It's only going to have more racking inside of it and stacks of, of, of uh, product to be shipped out. There's going to be no activity on that side of the building. We need to focus on what the application is, not that there's still perceived to be a noise issue that we would like to attenuate if in fact it is coming from us and there's something that we can do about it. The jurisdiction to pursue that isn't really with this petition. It's really with going to the building inspector, the Board of Health, and DEP. Uh, they'll actually have another bite at the apple when we go to conservation or when we do a, mod a modification of the site plan because we're putting the building on that end, we'll have to go to a site plan review and planning board. So we know this isn't gonna go away, but to impose this on Ken's at this stage delays them, it's gonna end up delaying them a year. And you know, it's for an innocuous addition to the backside of their building. Uh, I, I guess I'm just, I'm venting now and I'll kind of take a step back. Uh, I just will point out that in the noise study that we did prepare, the second sentence, of the, the last sentence of the first paragraph says, this study was aimed at truck refrigeration unit noise since I understand that the long-term steady flow frequency noise is the concern of the neighbors rather than moving trucks or other noise like that. And that's what the study focused on. Uh, it wasn't a full-blown Noise study is because to do that, it tends without shutting them down for a week to do a full-blown noise study with nothing going on. And that's why you extrapolate, you do things like this. Uh, I did reach out to our uh, noise expert to see if he could be here today. Uh, unfortunately, when I did reach him, he was out in the Midwest attending to his 95-year-old father, and he won't be back until next week. Uh, when I did get the information sent to me, I forwarded it to him, but I know he's not back yet, so I, I don't know what he would have to say about it. But it's, it's, I offered this up to meet with our sound people and with the abutters last Jan July 1st. Ken's continues to want to do that, but we don't want to be held hostage for a, a special permit that is less square footage than what we came to you for, and we're giving a variance for a taller building and, that's, and a bigger addition on that end of the building, which was approved by a prior board with literally not a lot of opposition. Uh, people were just concerned about what it might look like. Uh, I can say that, you know, Ken's does a, a nice product there. We are gonna, I know we have to go to conservation. I know we're probably in front of planning board. Uh, we believe that this is going to be an issue and something that we're going to continue to speak about. I spoke to Ken's. They're, they're happy to let the abutters do their, no, their own noise study, and then we'll look at it. But we paid for one, and we did one addressing what we felt was the focus of what they wanted to hear about. Okay? Uh, with that, I know you got a lot of information that came in, and you probably have a lot of people sitting in the audience that want to talk now that on behalf of uh, Deb, uh, her attorney as well. Uh, one thing I would point out after, after I did talk to the attorney was that uh, the first thing he said, talks about is a curb cut here. 
at this location. Uh, there's been a curb cut at this location since I was 20 years old. <laughs> I am now 70. <laughs> and it was expanded when Verizon went in there. And it's been active there ever since, back in the uh, 1970s, I think it was, when Verizon first went in. Uh, that intersection has also been studied. I was chairman of the 495 partnership. And when we worked with MassDOT on all the EMC property across the street, we looked at that whole intersection where the other road comes in on the other side. The whole access at Ken's was studied by DOT and they designed like ramps and flyovers and everything there. So there, there's a pre-existing uh, curb cut there that's been there for years. And when we did our renovation, we didn't change it. We just tapered the, the edges of properly and put curbing in and that type of thing. I was out there with MassDOT last month and with, variety, with uh, the utility because there's a pole there that all of Route 9's electricity is on and it's apt to get hit at some point and we want to move it. So they were out there looking at that intersection again and where our curb cut was and we were trying to figure out where that pole could be moved. And, you know, so all I can say is Ken has been and will continue to be a good neighbor. Uh, but I feel that we shouldn't be mixing whether or not we meet the criteria for a special permit for an innocuous add-on on, uh, on a building, which, you know, you could equate to another room being built on your house. Uh, I know that the lawyer said, oh, it's 325 feet from the the side setback. Well, the side setback in the industrial district is 50 feet. We're a long way from where we need to be. Uh, and we're not trying to pull a fast one. We've always worked with people. When there was a problem with the trucks going on 85, we got a call. Jim addressed it again. Uh, and we're going to continue to do that. I would just hope that this board would look at what we're here for and understand that we're going to have to live with DEP. If DEP feels that we need to do something, we have to do it. But we're willing to work with the sound people to get there. Okay. With that, I'll, I'll rest and let you let other people into the conversation. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Um, and so I, I just want to, first of all, just modify slightly. I, I, I heard exactly what you're saying about the curb cut. I think the, the, the proper way to say it is they can't find the permit for it. Doesn't yeah. mean there wasn't one. It means they can't find it. And I, I think... I think it's a good point to say we've, we've gone through this existence proof other times before to say we can't find it because it was done X number of years ago. Does not mean it doesn't exist. It means we don't have paper, paper proof of it. Um, okay, but so I just wanted, I just wanted to uh, um, throw that in there. Actually, um, Mike, do you, wanna, do you wanna start since you had a good close look at the property? Yeah, for um, what I what I did is with David, um, I did a site visit uh, at both Dave's house and, and Debbie's um, just so I could really try to understand the lay of the land to see where the issues were. I didn't go inside the, the facility, uh, but I did do a complete walk around. Uh, I got a really good understanding of my perception of, of the both the application, the intended use for the special permit, as well as the, what I can, what my perception was is areas of, of noise or concern for, for a butter, specifically Debbie. And um, I was at her property and that too was super helpful um, because what happens is the, the topography of her home's location, and I think her immediate abutters location, is this, that the sound is traveling up from, um, from Ken's Route 9, that whole direction. It just kind of kind of comes up. Um, the sound just kind of raises up through. So Debbie's a little bit higher up, and the sound seems to travel right up uh, that hillside towards their house. So you've got trees, 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 and then kind of like landscaping. And I think that sound kind of uh, hits them. Debbie would forward me a video 
uh, it was taken by her, one of her butters, uh, her next door neighbor, excuse me, about, you know, um, some of the noises, issues uh, that had been presented. You know, I, I definitely understand Bill's position on this. Before us tonight is a special permit for an addition um, that the petitioners have stated that this is not going to add any additional volume, that this is going to be additional space for their facility. And it's on the complete opposite side. And so, you know, I, I reread the special permit on the language is with respect to granting a special permit. And what we're trying to do, no, no special, I'm, I'm, I'm looking exactly at uh, section 174-9, shall not be substantially detrimental or offensive neighborhood or destructive values therein. In addition, the following special requirements comply, et cetera, et cetera. And so the question is, um, is this addition, again, I want to hear from the abutters, but my concern is that is this addition on this side going to be more detrimental to those abutters? And I think that's the topic for our board tonight. But as far as the site visit and the facilities, I see that what I think are the pressure points are for concern. My perception is that um, where the structure is, you know, if, if Debbie could have, uh, and I don't want to speak for her, but if she could have the parking and the trucking reversed, that would ameliorate her concerns, but obviously present concerns for the opposite of butter. So I, I, I I, I see the issues before them and I look forward to discussing all these matters with the board, but you know, that's, that was my perception of being at both locations. Uh, if I, if I could, Mr. Chair, uh, yep. Mike, I believe the film that you saw might've been taken by Chuck Haggerton. I believe that's the case. Yes. The next door neighbor. Okay. I don't know if there was ever one done by anybody else. I agree. Uh, it seemed pretty contemporan uh, contemporaneous to the sound. I mean, I, I can't, it's complete hearsay if we want to use a, 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 you know, a legal term in this setting. But at the same time, taking it on its face value, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't want that either. But again, I, 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 I question and I hear your points with respect to we're not here for adding or changing this side of, of this building. It, we're, we're talking about a request for a special permit on the opposite side that the petitioner is asserting is not going to uh, you know, impact, increase the impact. So that, that's gonna be for us to discuss. Uh, uh, was there any other point you wanted me to specifically hit upon? I also, I'm so embarrassed to say it, um, I took a walk down, is it Orchard? Is it Orchard? It's the- no, Orchard's off, off, that one off flag, yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of like right, it's directly it's north. That's so they're north of the, of the facility. Yeah, it's, and honestly, the sound was much more audible from Debbie's location, un unquestionably, but just from a just from a sound, I tried to get a, a complete picture of, of the whole area, including being up on Deerfoot. I was up at the uh, vet's office and tried to get a complete picture of the entire area. So, okay, thanks, Mike. Um, Paul, did you want? Did you have questions for Mr. Pizzoni? Or? Um, I I don't have any additional questions that I didn't have from last month, um, I mean, just to, I guess, to reiterate, you know, my concerns last month was, you know, was there gonna be any increase in, in noise levels? And it, it appears that's, you know, it was discussed last month and just discussed again now that there's not gonna be a increase due to this um, proposed addition. Um, you know, also my question from last month was on lighting, which was addressed and, um, you know, more of a comment than a question that some of the others of us had, I think maybe, I think Doris did too, perhaps about the, you know, the traffic, the, the, the 
traffic patterns that the trucks may sometimes take that are not right. Um, I noticed, you know, four or five years ago when I was first hearing about this, it was, it was worse. Um, so it seems to be not as bad. You know, most of what I would see was that U-turn on Route 9 there, which instead of doing the clover leaf at 85, um, which would back up traffic on Route 9, but I haven't seen that. Um, I haven't seen that occur as much. So it's getting better, or at least, you know, every now and then something might happen, but I don't see the same uh, frequency. Um, I do understand, however, there is, there is, an, there is a noise concern um, and it appears, you know, it appears to be mostly coming from the, you know, from the west side, not where the proposed addition is on the east side. Um, and so, you know, I feel that they're, you know, although that's maybe not what's on the table here, but maybe, you know, to address that, perhaps some type of, you know, some type of mitigation could take place to, to help alleviate that. Um, I thought it was an interesting comment um, that was made by, um, I believe by, by Kevin from, you know, the, you know, there that, uh, that Bill brought up about the snowbank, how that kind of, I guess, dampened some of the noise, um, you know, perhaps some type of a, you know, you know, berm or a hill with trees would would be a decent permanent type solution to that. Um, I'm not an engineer. I'm not a noise expert. Um, I have seen that done at projects um, quite often down South Florida, more to keep the noise up, you know, from mostly from highway, you know, from highway noise. But I see that used quite effectively where you, you build up, you know, you build up a hill or a berm and then, you know, plant, you know, dense vegetation on top of it. And it seems to be something that, you know, developers do to help keep the noise levels down on the houses they're trying to sell, so to say. So that's kind of my kind of thought or, uh, you know, thought, thought into maybe, you know, doing something like that on the, on the, on the West end of this to, you know, to help, to help mitigate what, you know, currently does exist. Those are, those are my thoughts. Thanks, Paul. Craig? Yeah, I have two things. Um, I want to kind of echo what Mike was saying in regards to the fact that, you know, what we're asked to look at is the impact of this addition um, and its potential increase, substantially detrimental increase to what exists now. Um, so I think kind of keeping that in mind as we hear the rest of the comments is going to be important. Um, I also want to caution us from overstepping our purview. Um, you know, this will go in front of planning board for site plan review. They are typically the ones that talk about vegetative screens and berms and the like. Um, and it will go in front of conservation commission for wetlands and stormwater retention and things of that nature. So I know in the in the letter we got, it mentioned a bunch of those things that aren't in our purview. We have been, we have had our hand slapped, so to speak, for what people perceive as us overstepping in the past. So, um, you know, I think it would be important for us to really kind of stick to, as Aldo has always told us, the four corners of what's in front of us. Thanks, Craig. Uh, Doris? Uh, Doris? You're on mute. You have to come off mute first. Yeah. Hi. There you go. Um, at our last meeting, um, I felt very satisfied in that answering the questions that I had. And in coming to this meeting, I just had a, a hope um, that there would just be outside of what we need to decide on tonight. I, I echo a lot of what uh, Craig is saying, that there would be some um, steps in a, in, a, in a good direction um, outside of a, a feeling of pressure um, to decide on something when I don't have the expertise. And, and I do tend to think it's outside of 
what the applicant's asking for. Now, they're asking to put with no impact on a different side of the location, a, um, a storage facility. Um, so I, you know, Attorney Pizzoni, I, I hear your frustration um, in that regard. The, the, so what's escalating, it, and it's something I consider, what's escalating is there's no mitigation. It doesn't feel as though we're, we're having any mitigation process. Um, and I do have a concern, it was in my last um, set of meeting notes, that as we go forward, the conditions, the conditions in the last special permit, they're just not being met. So I just need, I'd like to hear a little bit more feedback on that. Um, why put a condition in if it's the roads? Because there's been a bit of a, you know, roads. Why put a condition in? Or why put a condition in to put a sound wall in if it doesn't meet it? <laughs> it doesn't meet it. So I, I think there's a failure either okay. in, in, in a, in a, resp a serious responsibility that those trucks don't go down the side roads. And that's something I'm very serious about because that is within the corners of this application and in the last special permit. Um, besides saying um, we're going to do it, how do I know it's going to get done? Because it, and, and it, I don't, from the feedback and my driving up in the roads, it, it didn't happen. And now we have a very costly sound wall and it is outside uh, the applicant if there's no additional impact that really needs a serious commitment to get mitigated. <laughs> um, there is noise, but it's not in the application. It, it doesn't appear to be in the application that you're, you're stating. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I mean, maybe you could comment on that. What are we gonna do about the traffic? Sure, sure. And, uh, and please, besides being upset, <laughs> which is, I understand why people get upset. I, what are we gonna do? What, what do you think you're going to do besides, oh, we're just going to work it out? Because now we have two attorneys. And that is really outside of this meeting. We have turned it to attorneys. That's never a good sign. <laughs> it's never I, a good sign to have two attorneys going at it. If I could, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I respond? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, the traffic turning out on Route 9, we try to monitor that on a daily basis. We don't control everybody that comes there because they're not our workers. And all we can do is we find them, or we tell them they can't come anymore, that those drivers can't be there. But we don't know they're doing that unless somebody reports it. So the only time we know it's happened is when the police let us know or the building department call us and let us know. When we do, Jim steps into it, he starts sending, he sends out more emails to all the drivers, you're not supposed to go there. It's posted in the facility. So we can, it's an ongoing process. Because you get new drivers that come in, they hit their GPS, they do the wrong thing instead of doing the right thing. So I, you know, I lived in Southwell for 35 years. I understand the issues that are out there on Route 9. Uh, the, the other part of it with the sound wall, the sound wall was specifically built and those conditions were placed in that other permit to protect the people on Orchard Road and on, on uh, what's that? That's, that's Deerfoot, and Deerfoot, okay? And when they talk about moving the wall or building another one, they're talking about over in that area. They weren't talking about at the other end. They were mm -hmm. talking about just in that area. Right. One of the things we went back and forth with when we wrote that condition was, we can't be at the mercy of just somebody saying, oh, it's too loud. They have to prepare a study that shows that we have DEP's limitations, and then we have to deal with it. We took it on ourselves when Deb and Chuck brought this up. We know you guys don't want to pay for a study, but let's focus on what the study needs to be, and we'll pay for this portion of it. The permit, the original permit, was the, the onus is on the abutter or anybody else that's going to raise the issue. Ken's. I told you, we thought we were doing everything right. It wasn't until we filed this petition that I knew Deb was still having a problem up there. And it was for the first time I've heard people on Orchard Road complaining again and, and or Deerfoot. So 
I, if, if the noise is over there, they haven't been calling who they were supposed to, which was the Board of Health or the Building Department, so we would know about it. Mm -hmm. Just all of a sudden, it's here today. How do we, how do we react if people aren't giving us a chance to react? Yeah, I, I, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to listen, of course. I thought I had read a letter, and, and there's a, definitely a communication that is outside the corners of this. There's a letter that seemed to detail all this communication that could have corresponded that says the problem was ongoing. So either it's true or it's not true. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. So I got a letter. Now that so that could be true or not true. Um, that says there was a step-by-step -step sets of communication uh, between Ken's. Now maybe it went to the wrong person, but there has been communication. So can, can you tell me when that letter came? There's a letter, uh, I think Deb attached to the meeting notes that so says on this day we spoke, on that day we spoke. And, and when somebody, certainly when Deb joins in, I'm going to get corrected in some ways. But am I incorrect in saying that, Katie? There was a letter from Deb and it kind of outlines out, we talked, we didn't talk. I can pull it. There's, yeah, no, I saw Deb's letter, but the letter she attached, I thought was from the Deneens, or somebody did back in 2014, which is something we addressed back in 2014. I'm talking about today. The only notice we ever got, and we had to pull the files from the police department, were we were called out to Chuck's, we were called out to Deb's. We went out there, we didn't hear anything. We came back again, we didn't hear anything. Or we came and we heard a little bit of something this time. So that's, and we responded to that. That's when we started meeting with them last year. But other than that, we have not heard anything from, okay. Okay. remember our permits were granted back in 2000. I absolutely, I absolutely know that. Um, attorney. Right. They were granted and I understand uh, also uh, that you feel hostage, if I use your own words, uh, you feel hostage that it's not in the application when you're doing a lesser thing, on, a lesser expansion on the other side of the building. Um, but there are butters that are complaining. So that's the problem. I understand the problem. And, and, and like we said, and like the past boards have said, if you're exceeding the DEP standards and you have to bring proof forward to show that, we have to address it. That's separate and apart from this addition we're trying to put on. That's something that's ongoing. That's going to be out there forever. It's regulated state anybody can do that but they have to bring forward substantive information and reports and studies to show that you're doing that if i could if i could interject real quickly here bill um the i would say that the condition in an earlier in an earlier special permit was all about the north side and i think debbie even admitted like there's really nothing in there that applies any longer because I read that a little bit more extensively today, and it, it talked just about that section. It didn't talk about any other place. It talked about extending the, the trees. So I don't, I don't think that earlier condition applies here, is, is all I would, I would say. And, and if, if I might, Dave, back in all the prior hearings, we never heard anything from anybody up on Deerfoot Road that there was any noise on that end of the building. And that's where all the traffic was, except the two bay doors. You know? and, 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 you know, we know things change and we just want to, we do want to be good neighbors. Okay. Did, did you have anything more, Doris? No, it's more of a comment that there's a set of parties that say they didn't hear and there's a set of parties that said they communicated. So, I mean, that I don't need to hear more about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I mean, my understanding. I don't need to hear from, more about that. Um, from, from, from talking to the building, uh, the building commissioner is, you know, there were some police reports which Bill referenced, but I don't think she had anything else other than those police reports, which seemed to be bunched up in, I think it was January and February of, of yeah. 2020. I think there was three of them. Right. So. Okay. I'm sorry, Doris. Are you are you are you set now or? Am I set? Yeah. I'm definitely set. Yes, I'm absolutely set. No problem. Thank you, Attorney Pizzano. Um, Jamie, you're you're not a voting member on this board, but I don't know if there was something that popped up. It's something you thought should be addressed. Um, I just have a few thoughts. First of all, I, I totally understand what Mr. Pizzoni is saying that 
are, are we too in the weeds about things that aren't relevant? But I also think that there's a reason we send these notices to all abutters, even if it's not the abutter who may be directly impacted or as closely impacted where the addition will be. Um, so I just think that's something to take into consideration in addition with the fact that there's gonna be construction noise um, in addition to the noise that's already being complained about. I, I get it, it's, it's like we need to separate ourselves from an issue that was before, but I think the reason, and when Michael read that bylaw or the standard, there's a reason we contact all these abutters and find out what they think of this. And maybe some of them felt like they didn't have a voice before a new application came in front of them. Maybe they felt like, okay, now, now they want to build again. Well, I'm, I'm not even happy the way it is now. So even if it's not directly impacting them, the new addition, that's kind of where their mind is. Um, and I think it's something I'm taking to consideration. Um, the only other thing I was going to say is that I, I live on Lover's Lane, so I walk down Orchard all the time. And I think that I can't hear anything, but the way the topography is, the houses at the end are kind of on a hill, and I don't think we would, just walking the street, we'd have to trespass in someone's backyard um, to, to hear the actual sound. Um, those are just my two comments. Thanks, Jamie. Um, I, I'm just... I'll just add in a little bit here. Um, I, I did see uh, the site with with uh, Mr. Bazzoni and Mr. Bourne. Um, I think I think Mike and I would agree that there's little doubt that the, the refrigerated units would be the source of the issue. Um, but I also agree that uh, that the special permit is about an addition on the east side of the building, and I. Do think it's a mistake to conflate the two. I think we do need to listen to the concerns of the butters, um, but um, you know, I, I will add that uh, I, because I ended up having some time there. Uh, Mr. Bourne gave me a tour inside the facility, and what was noteworthy was that um, you know we could we could converse in normal at normal uh, conversation levels. It's not noisy inside the facility. Um, the only I guess clarification I would ask Mr. Bazzoni is, in the addition, is that just more of the same warehouse operation that's gonna be happening there? Like, in other words, should there be a concern of more noise in that addition versus the rest of the facility? Uh, actually, it's just gonna be an expansion of the robotics and the racking. Okay. It's, it's gonna be the same thing that's there. Okay. Deeper All right. So it's the same thing that's there, and I, I'm just I'm just noting as as somebody who saw the facility that it was not something where it was I'd say exceptionally noisy inside the building, which would make me think you know I don't think there's going to be much of an impact noise wise outside the building either. So uh, those are those are my comments on it. Um, again, I do my thought is it is something that I think. Ken should follow up on, um, but I don't think it's part of the special permit. So, uh, Katie. Just a quick thing. I just want yes, to, uh, just, I, my impression, uh, two, two separate points on this. Um, the one point I wanted to make, I didn't think it was the refrigeration trucks, to be honest. I thought that those ran pretty quietly. I think the noise that I heard the most acutely was when, because the trucks need to turn off, they don't idle. It's the starting and stopping and restarting of those trucks um, as they load into the bay. So like, I didn't think, it, my perception was that it wasn't the refrigeration trucks. I think it's a, it's, I think it's a cacophony of the trucks, the refrigeration, the, flow, route nine, and all of that sound is then coming up, unfortunately, to Debbie and her direct neighbor. I think the sound literally, the, the topography of the, of the land brings that up. I thought Jamie's point um, was really great. This is why we have this language. That's why abutters are noticed, and that's why we're here. Uh, yes, I agree that these are separate issues, but those you know, I thought the way that Jamie framed it with respect to a lot of times people just kind of, 
No, I don't have anything else to, you know, a way to deal with it except now. So I'm interested to hear what the abutters have to say, but I, I do agree that we as a board and as an attorney that deals with other boards, um, you know, Craig had mentioned overreach uh, and I'm really cognizant of what our role is. Our role as a zoning board are it laid out in our rules and, you know, I've said it before, but, you know, we just need to call balls and strikes here. The petition that's before us is for an addition on the opposite side. I want to hear those abutters. I want to hear what's going on, but I really want us to, to focus in on what our role is, both for the petitioner and also for the abutters. I mean, they have to want, everyone has to live with this. So, uh, let's just figure that out. And I look forward to hearing um, uh, those butters. All right. All right. Katie, I think we could probably let uh, uh, some of the uh, butters in or the public. Yep. The first person with their hand up is uh, Mr. Bartolini. Can you hear me now? Yeah, Jack. Uh, sorry about that. I'm having problems here. Um, I want to speak. Uh, I, I own the property across the street on. Uh, um, uh, Jack, Jack, sorry. If you if you could just. Oh, know. John Bottolini Jr., Four Wire Circle, South Bro, Massachusetts. Thank you. Um, my brother and I own the property across the street at uh, uh, 278, 270, uh, 276, 278, 280. Turnpike Road. I just want to bring up, I'm going to go in a different direction here. Um, the drainage on, the, on that piece of Route 9 goes from south to north. And I just want to make sure, I haven't seen these plans. I did talk to Bill uh, a while ago. I'm sorry I missed the first meeting. But the, uh, uh, I just want to make sure that the, uh, with all these talks of berms and things, that the drainage is not impeded from the south side of Route 9 to the north side of Route 9 as it travels through this property. Uh, I've worked with Kins before. They're very good people to work with. We had a horrific problem with beavers a couple of years ago, and they took care of it. Actually, it took about two years to get to, to straighten out the beavers. But uh, we worked with their engineers and my engineers, and they did a wonderful job. But my concern is the, uh, the flow of the uh, drainage from the south uh, side of uh, uh, nine to the north side. So I just want to be on the record for that. Other than that, I have no problem with this. Okay. Great. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. All right, great. Thank you. This is David Sears, 74 Deerfoot Road. Um, first, I'd like to thank Jamie for her comments, uh, especially about a butter's not feeling like they had a voice in the past. I, I, I don't think I could agree with that even more. Secondly, the, the board appears to have many new members since the last application several years ago. I wanted to thank you, <clears throat> thank you all as it appears really does appear that you all truly respect Southboro residents, especially the abutters. So a sincere thank you. This is a very different experience than, than last time. Um, it, and despite the fact that I like Mr. Pozzoni personally, um, he keeps using the term innocuous um, for the building addition. And I just can't agree with that term. And I think anyone living across the street from where it's going to be on Deerfoot, such as you know, my property and I'm up high and especially 76 deer foot, um, my neighbors who are on the, on, on, are listening in as well here, um, and some folks on Kenley Lane. I, I think it's fairly irrefutable that the larger and closer, you know, any commercial building is to pretty much any residential property is, is gonna, it's gonna more, it will affect and lower our property values. Um, I, I really don't have much in the way of comments other than one, one more thing is we, we briefly discussed during the last meeting um, the condition that the board had required Kenswood here to with the previous permit application process 
um, which involved planting uh, some trees on the front areas of two properties across the street, my, my property, and again, 76 Deerfoot. Um, I believe it was board member Mr. Nicholson who um, last time may have implied the that the condition should be considered as potentially back on the table. Um, I, I would like that to be a reality. Um, I, I realized that the building was taller last time, but it wasn't any closer this time. It's a lot closer, um, but it isn't tall. It isn't taller. Uh, regardless, um, I'm fairly certain it's 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 not very debatable that that you know again a commercial property. The closer it is, it's it's going to affect our property values, and um, I think my neighbor and I would welcome a conversation with. Um, um, with uh, Mr. Pozzoni, uh, Mr. Bourne, who, who we spoke with last time to revisit that uh, condition from several years ago. But um, thank you all. And, and seriously, Bill, thank you too. Thank you, I, I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Williams, if I could, just, I wanna make a clarification. Yep, you may. Yeah, the, uh, the other addition was actually a bigger footprint and came just as close to your property and went up another 20 feet. So it, it would have been a lot closer to your property and it would have been much more imposing. Uh, the other point is I, I can see where you might be able to see it in your, your, your next door neighbor. I'm not sure how Kenley Lane could see it because you've got so many trees there and we're 320 feet from the property line, which isn't even the street line at Deerfoot. And it's all treed in there. So, uh, you know, I, I I know that when we put it in at the last time, it was to address those issues with the height of the building and it being so much closer to you. Uh, so I'm, you know, I'm, I, I honestly don't think it should be imposed in this one, but I leave that to the board. Okay. I hope that doesn't change for me, David. I, Bill, I love you. <laughs> but you. You've got your job to do, and I've got mine. We both got to do. We both have to do what we have to do to preserve our own our own values. I'm also thank, thank, thank you. Thank thank you, David. Good evening. This is Nathaniel Stevens. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Thanks. I'm Nathaniel Stevens from McGregor and Legere in Boston, and I represent Debbie and Kevin Farrington of 58 Flag Road. I submitted a letter yesterday dealing, uh, detailing how the proposed expansion of Ken's Foods does not meet the standards for a special permit. Debbie's and Kevin's sound expert, Mark Wallace, would like to speak after me. Given the existing and historic noise and traffic issues of the current facility, this operation is presently failing the standards for special permit because its benefits are not outweighing the adverse effects on the town, the neighbors, the health, and the safety of the town residents. It's not in harmony with the purposes of the zoning bylaw. It is in conflict with public health. We have not seen sufficient evidence that the pro proposed addition will not change this balance. For instance, while Ken's Food stated at your last hearing that it would be a wash in terms of truck traffic, an additional whether there would be additional truck traffic, they did not specify whether the mix of truck traffic would change, whether it would be at different hours, or whether there would be fewer or more refrigeration units. You, you've heard from neighbors at your last hearing about the noise and experience since they've had of vibrations to their chests and their ears, and have had and have. Some property owners, abutters, have had to use earplugs in their, for sleeping in the bedrooms that are facing Ken's. I believe that was on the east side, abutters on the east side. You also have a letter from Debbie uh, more recently, and then an earlier letter from both her and Kevin detailing these adverse effects. We don't believe that they should have to incur the costs to undertake an expensive sound study, as Attorney Pizzoni suggests, to have their uh, grievances addressed by the zoning board. These noises and vibrations are at night and early in the evening. 
We don't believe that any of the zoning board members have visited the site at those hours, obviously perhaps for good reason, but we don't believe that due, sufficient due diligence has been done on this. These sounds and, and vibrations are disrupting people's lives and their ability to work. This operation is significantly affecting and their use and enjoyment of their properties. These rights should not be outweighed by the existing or potential additional tax revenues uh, from Ken's to the town of Southboro. We agree with the letter that you received yesterday from the Southboro Board of Health that the addition should not be allowed until the noise, noise issues are identified and mitigation is addressed. We also note that the existing operation is about seven times that that is allowed in an industrial district as of right. The petitioner has not explained how adding, adding to this operation to allow it to become nine times larger than what is allowed by right will change the current balancing of the detrimental effects. Please also remember that this site abuts a residential zoning district. In fact, part of the Ken's property is within the residential zoning district. I did look at the, uh, I did watch the meeting of your, for your April 21st hearing, and that was left off with Ken's, Ken's agreeing to regroup by, by attorney Pizzoni saying he would speak with Ken's about possible measures and also continue to, to work with the neighbors. My clients weren't contacted by uh, attorney Pizzoni until just a few days ago. Clearly with the existing noise issues not addressed and the applicant having not sufficiently demonstrated how the new facility will not uh, add to these issues, we asked the ZBA to, to deny, the, uh, deny this special permit. In the alternative, we asked that the ZBA continue this matter to another night to give everyone more time to work on, on this and see what solutions can be de developed and included as possible special permit conditions. Again, at your last meeting, there seemed to be consensus among the board members that developing special permit conditions that are feasible and that will adjust the ongoing issues of noise should be included and discussed with the public. For instance, we need more information about the new automation equipment that's being, that says in the application will be put in this edition. What noise will it create? What hours will, be, will it be operated? What other operations will you put in this addition or moved around the existing uh, building? These things may have a bearing on the sounds emanating from the facility and disturbing the neighbors. Mr. Wallace can provide a list of things that he would need to help to look into these to determine what the so sources of the noise are as well as possible remedies. My clients are interested in solutions that, that work and don't want to have Ken's spend money on things that don't work. That doesn't benefit anyone. We again respectfully request that the hearing be continued if you don't, don't deny the, the special permit application outright to allow time to develop and discuss with public input possible meaningful conditions to address, this, address these real and valid concerns of residents of the town of Southboro. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Minakshi, I'm Snae's wife, and um, I live in 76 Deerfoot Road. And I just wanted to understand, we are new to Southboro area, and then our experience living in this location has been like one year, and obviously we see a lot of things. Um, and one thing Mr. Pizzoni mentioned that there are trees and we don't see it. We clearly see everything, even the, there, there are like construction equipments, on this side of the Deerfoot Road, we see everything. So I wanted to understand what is being done um, to make sure it's not going to increase more noise on our side. And I echo with the comment that Dave has about the visual. What is being done if on that side of the property to maybe like high 
uh, minimize the noise and help us on our side with the visual and the noise both. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wasn't sure if you were done, but I just wanted to say thank you for your comments on that. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Yes. yes. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair. My, uh, for the record, my name is Mark Wallace. I'm a vice president at uh, Tech Environmental. Uh, we are located at 303 Wyman Street, Suite 295 in Waltham, Massachusetts. I'm a uh, sound consultant with, with over 33 years of experience addressing noise issues in the New England area. I was retained to perform a peer review of the June 12, 2020 Ken's Foods facility noise analysis prepared by David Coke Consulting and I had forward a copy of my letter to the board. I would like to just provide a brief summary of my findings. Um, the sound study included both on-site and community noise measurements to address complaints about truck noise from the neighbors on the west side of the facility. Specifically, the sound study focused on truck refrigeration unit, units and its possible uh, uh, potential for low frequency noise impacts. The sound study primarily focuses on the results of unattended sound monitoring where there was no observer to accurately document the sound contribution from the refrigeration trucks at 24 and 58 Flag Road. This approach does not follow proper acoustic standards and procedures nor the mass DEP uh, procedures to assess whether a facility is in compliance. The sound study also assumes that the nuisance noise that abutting neighbors have complained about is attributed from trucks. However, the sound study is not assess if objectionable sounds are coming from other sound sources. Overall, it's my expert opinion that the sound site does not follow proper acoustic standards and procedures to assess compliance with the Mass DEP noise regulations under 310 CMR 7.10 uh, and the Mass DEP noise policy requirements. In order to properly assess the sound impacts from the existing and future expansion of the facility and to possibly work collaboratively with Ken's Food to solve the noise problem, I recommend the following information be provided. Uh, log reports of the trucking and, um, and loading dock operations for the existing facility during the time that the David Co uh, Consulting Sound Study was performed, the raw sound data files from, from that study, uh, manufacturing specifications and sound data for the existing and future expansion rooftop HVAC equipment, any future changes in operation, hours of operation of trucking and loading dock area to related, uh, related to the expansion, and a list of equipment and sound specification data for outdoor indoor mechanical equipment, such as waste compactors and other hydraulic and compressor equipment for both the existing and future expansion. I thank you for the opportunity to provide my summation on my peer review and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Mark, thank you. I don't see any other hands up at the moment. You don't? Okay. Um, Could I all right. Uh, I was gonna say, Mr. Bazzoni, would you like to respond? I imagine you would. Yes, yes. Uh, well, a couple of things. The, uh, what people don't understand, we're here for a special permit for an extension on the east side of that building that's really just three walls tying it into there. There's going to be no other activity on that outside. It's going to be like they're looking at the same building only 50 feet closer, okay, which isn't even to where the parking lot is or isn't even to where the retention pond is or even isn't close to where the fence is on the Ken's property. So it's, it's not going to change from a visual aspect that much from over there, and there's not going to be any activity on that side of the building. So there's no increase in activity over there. Uh, we did tell you there's going to be no increase at the site because right now there are trucks coming from Ken's, dropping stuff off and going back and forth. They're not going to have to do that any longer because we're going to have the larger capacity. So there's going to be less truck traffic during the day. Uh, 
as far as the Board of Health letter, it really doesn't say anything other than they received a few comments from people that there's a noise issue. They didn't look into it. They didn't review the study. I know that Paul Bozinski had started looking at this over a year ago, and they deferred to DEP to do their, do their bidding, okay? Uh, as far as uh, the sound study goes, we stand beside it. As I said, the first sentence defines the scope of what the study is going to be in that first paragraph. And it was because that's what the neighbors and that's what Ken's thought the issue was. If Ken's isn't going to pay for a full sound study for something that they don't think exceeds the standards. The opportunities there for the community, the neighbors, they've hired a peer reviewer, let him do his study. Uh, we didn't have somebody sit up in Deb's backyard for the four days while this was going on to monitor the equipment because we didn't think she was going to want somebody there. Uh, and also the, and I think uh, the peer reviewer will agree that what we did was we determined a baseline for what the sound of the refrigeration was. And that gives you something that you can go off of. And, you know, it's not like we were trying to pull a fast one. We did the study. We were Commission to look into and to do and what we thought was the issue. If there's a further issue they think it is, if they can do their own sound study, we're happy with that. Uh, as far as Mr. Stevens' position, I stand by my submittal, which outlines how Ken's meets the criteria for a special permit for what, you know, and I won't call it innocuous again, but for a, an addition on that side of the building with no windows, no doors that isn't gonna impact any noise over on that side. Uh, I just think that you know we need to look at what the jurisdictional re requirements are for your board, what the jurisdictional requirements are for other boards. There are other jurisdictional avenues with DEP to address the sound. I will commit that Ken will, Ken's will continue to try to work with the community because they don't wanna be bad neighbors, but they don't wanna be held hostage to get a permit that should be really not that big, you know, I don't want to say that, shouldn't be that insurmountable to give for this type of addition that isn't going to impact really anybody. Uh, I, with that, I'll just, uh, I'll just rest. I'll let, I'll let you guys ask questions if you want. Right. Um, is that, did any of the board members want to ask additional questions following the, the the public comment of uh, Mr. Pizzoni or, or discuss, discuss it any further? Mark, Craig? No. Mike, you good? Um, just as, like, I don't know if Debbie's in attendance or not. I, I always like to hear directly. I know her attorney's here, but I don't know if she wanted to speak to any point. If not, um, or Kevin, uh, yeah. I, I just, um, it's one of those things. I just want to make sure everybody uh, every voice is accounted for it. If not, I, I say let's close the. Uh, you know, if she's okay. not there. Not. Yeah, I, I'll just I'll just note like that when I did talk to Debbie uh, earlier this week, I think she said she actually would prefer not to because I think she <laughs> she gets a little worked up, and so the attorney really spoke for her. So no, it's just I hope she no. doesn't mind me speaking for her. But I'm just going to share that was our conversation. Okay, great. I just wanted to make sure we're getting all the places so we can consider everything as best we can. Um, but I, I spoke to them, uh, both Debbie and Kevin, and you know I, I feel those issues, uh, right. how, how this affects their daily daily life. So I, I really I feel that directly. But if that's okay. the case, uh, I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. There is um, another hand up. Okay, great. For, um, from the Board of Health, if you wanted to hear them first. Yep, please. Um, Hi, Heather Alker from Board of Health. I only joined into this position mid-January, so obviously this is all new to me. And I was able to attend the meeting um, a month ago. And um, I understand how the, you know, the West Side and Deb, that's sort of a different issue than the current um, proposal. But my concern tonight was 
And unfortunately, I was in another meeting at the same time. So I only heard some of the um, abutters, but um, David Sears, um, there may have been another. Um, my memory from a month ago, there were other abutters on that east side who were concerned about this proposed um, expansion. But did we just hear less of them tonight? Yeah, yeah. They, they gave their comments, so they are part of the record. They don't need to come yeah. back and make the same comments. Right. Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. Right. If anything, we just heard. Uh, we also had a letter from uh, Marnie Houlihan on this as well. So, okay. Right, and and I don't, you know, I can't speak to other avenues of reporting, but I certainly did hear that last um, last meeting. There were definitely more concerns from the abutters about the this current proposal. Right. Okay. Thank you, Heather. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any other hands up, Katie? Not see any. And I'm going to resubmit my uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. We have a motion to close the public hearing. Seconded. All in favor, aye. Doris? Aye. Paul? Aye. Mike? Aye. Craig? Aye. And aye for Williams. All right. Okay. Uh, the public part of the meeting is closed. I don't know if we want to discuss anything additional before going directly to a vote. Uh, consideration of conditions or just a vote. No, I just, you know, I thought um, Debbie and Kevin's, Kevin's attorney did a good job raising his positions as, as well as Bill for his, uh, Mr. Sears and the other abutters. Um, I hear all those voices and at the same time I look at the structure and the proposed addition and I just, those sound issues I think are genuine. I think they are a point of concern. I don't think that this addition is going to affect that. I think uh, I think that is a separation. Uh, they are building an addition on the other side of the building. There are, I think, genuine uh, concerns that need to get addressed. But I just, my position on this is the special permit, is this addition going to be substantially more detrimental than what's existing there now? And what's existing there now, I'm not saying is acceptable. That's a different story. Enforcement's a different story. But the petition that's before us as a board tonight, the way I see this is they want to build this addition that's less in size than what was previously approved um, it's still substantially uh, quite a distance from Deerfoot Road having been on the site and knowing what the size that they're intending to put in at, a, at the, the same height. I, I honestly think once it's built, people won't even be able to tell the difference what was there before and what's there now. Um, so, you know, it's my position that the issues are genuine, they're real, but I, I don't see how the, the petitioner's request to build an addition on the opposite side uh, impacts or is more detrimental than what's existing now. Thank you. Craig? Yeah, I'm gonna echo that comment from Michael. Um, there were a couple of other comments that got brought up, um, you know, in terms of drainage, which, you know, I wanted to just make sure everybody understands we'll go in front of the Conservation Commission. They will be looking at that. Um, uh, Mr. Sears mentioned the trees. I did mention whether that should be on the table. I don't think it should be a condition. I think um, we can probably take a vote on a separate motion outside of this to send a letter to the planning board, kind of highlighting the concerns that we had and the neighbors had as part of this process to ensure that they look at those issues. Um, so, you know, it's not that we're not hearing them. It's just 
again, looking at this specific application, the addition does not seem to be making the existing noise concerns substantially worse. Um, and there is benefit to the town. There is increased tax base. There is um, fees for building. There's, there's other things of that nature that will benefit the town. And I think therefore we are within our four corners of what's in front of us in a position to approve this. Greg? Uh, Doris or Paul? So um, it's on the other side of the building. The petition says they're not going to increase the impact. But with a great caution, and I wish I could place it in a condition, um, with great caution, I, I don't, outside of this board, um, we had a series of experts say there's a problem, and I would suspect they're just going to continue pursuing it through the process. I'd like to see more cooperation on both sides um, to resolve, in serious of resolve, because I sense, what's the word, resistance. You know, they're always wrong. I hope that's not the case. I hear on one hand, we cooperate, but that's not what you're saying, because you, you don't agree. So is that cooperation? I, I would strongly encourage and caution outside of this board to seriously come to some mitigation because those concerns are real. And on the other hand, inside the board, we're just looking at this petition at this location on the opposite side. And I, I don't think there's something dubious in requesting a lesser addition. Um, so that's, and with some thoughts from the other members of the board, because I do think there's a small pattern and I do see it as a responsibility to place a condition on. I'm not seeing that solely as the police department, the health department and the conservatory department to um, you know, mitigate traffic. Um, if we have a condition on, I, I don't know what that condition is going to look like. <laughs> um, I want it to stick. I, I don't want to be backed. I'm one of those accountability people. I wouldn't want to be backed. It would affect it would affect the way I think about, and I think very highly of Ken's, and I truly appreciate the increase in the tax base. Um, that would be good, but that needs to solve. The noise problem needs to solve, and the truck problem, in my mind, outside this application, strongly encouraged to solve it. Yeah, well said. Paul, anything? Um, not much. I, I, I agree with Mike's assessment of the request. And um, I also like the idea of, that Craig had about, um, I guess, outside of our decision, um, a letter of concerns to, to pass along to the other, to the other boards that need to, to hear about this. Um, and that's, that's, that's all I have to say at this point further. Okay. Final thoughts, Jamie? Um, nothing major. I, I understand the point of the petition. Um, I, I don't love the wording of being held hostage. And I also don't like the wording that, well, this is a give me permit. We're just going to give this. It was an automatic. So why are we questioning it now? Um, I think that kind of questions why we have a board in the first place. So, so I understand what you're saying about how typically this would this would be an easier um, confirmation without these sound issues. Um, I also think that Mr. Pizzoni opened the door to the abutter complaints when he said, "Oh, we haven't heard anything." Um, well, there are, there are complaints, so I. I completely understand both sides. I just wanted to point that out. I, I don't get a vote. So those are my thoughts. Thanks. So I'll, I'll, thank you, Jamie and everyone. Um, I'll, I'll try to be brief here. Um, I, I do, I think I echo what Craig and Mike and Paul have said that the, 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 this is a, there is a serious sound issue 
that I think Ken's needs to address, but I do not think that has any connection to the, the, the special permit application in this case. Um, I, I would say history would suggest that they are good neighbors, and I don't have any reason not to believe him that they're going to continue to be good neighbors. So um, I think the idea of sending something to the planning board is good. I, I also actually just want to make a minor point where, where Mr. Pizzoni noted that the Board of Health submitted, uh, you know, a memo, but but he's correct in saying that all it really did is said their neighbors have concerns. There's no data saying this is the problem. So um, I think that's separately. I think that's to be pursued separately. So, all right, that's it. I've said my piece. I will move to grant the special permit application uh, for 325 Turnpike Road. I'll second yeah. that. I have a motion. We have a motion to approve the special permit as written with a second. All in favor, say aye. Doris. I want to write a condition. Do I do that? It's a procedural question, David. Uh, well, we 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 had a we had a motion and it was seconded. So now we need to vote on it. Just yes or no, no conditions. Yeah, correct. You know, just to, it's a, just for this is a procedural. If if you if you wanted to add a condition or change that, you'd vote no. Um, but it's just a. I think it's just. Well, I mean, she can dis, I mean, We can discuss, and if she wants to make a, another proposal, she may. Or yeah, I think you can ask to amend the 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 the, the motion on the. Right. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll vote on whether or not we accept that condition. The amended motion. Yeah, that makes sense. That would follow the typical town. Right. Yeah, just, yeah. It's just a matter of order, and and um, uh, and, and someone correct me. So I would make a motion. Um, <laughs> I say this wrong. I'd make a motion to um, amend the uh, vote for a condition. Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, I think I think what you want to do is is move to amend the motion to add a condition to the approval. And, and then, then you can just tell Wow, yeah. okay, it's mouth. I move to uh, make a motion to amend the condition, the okay. approval of the proposal. And, and and what's the condition that you'd like to add? Um, the proposal would be, and certainly with the support of you guys, the proposal would be um, and you correct me, is a continuance of the um, traffic monitoring commitment to the traffic monitoring and um, approval of special permit. There's a special permit number maybe three or four years ago that just to recommit to that. Okay. Is tra right. Traffic shouldn't increase uh, according to the permit, um, but um, the um, turning of uh, middle, reiterate it for word for word, reiterate the middle road and the flag road turnabouts okay. um, are to be um, monitored. I could use the same wording, in fact, of the other uh, special permits. So, uh, Craig, what's the what would be the procedure here? Do we we need to vote on the amended motion first, to, like town meeting does, or how does it work? We need to. to well, you'd have to have someone second what she's yeah, proposed. Have have well, that's what I was right. That under that. And we can discuss. That. Okay, do we have a second to the amend to Doris's amended motion? I I do not second it. Um, and I would propose that as stated by Craig was adequate. And I understand Doris's concern and statement. And I think that would be best um, addressed in this letter that that Craig had referenced that we do uh, to send this along um, because I don't believe um, like the ongoing monitoring of traffic is um, is like germane to what the the request for the special permit is here yeah and I, I, think I, I, I would that, find it uh, adequate if um, Greg puts it in the letter specifically on uh, sound and traffic control to the planning board that 
that would be, I see your point. That would be adequate for me. Okay. Can you withdraw your motion then? Okay. So I'm going to withdraw my motion. To, All, right. Back to, All, right. All right. Okay. So, so that brings us back to the original motion, which, uh, which was to approve it as written, seconded by Paul. So back to the original motion, Doris, how do you vote? I'm in favor of um, giving uh, Ken's food the special permit to okay. have a lesser addition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Paul? I vote yes. Mike? Yes. Craig? Yes. And Williams, I as well. Um, all right. Uh, um, Thank you very much. You're welcome, Mr. Bazzoni. And uh, uh, if Nathaniel's still on the phone, uh, give me a call over the next couple of days. Uh, but give me a reprieve tomorrow because I became a grandfather today. Uh, congratulations, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, All right, thank you. Congratulations. All right, so uh, before we really leave this topic, uh, what are what exactly do we want to capture in the memo to the to the planning board that are our concerns? Um, you know, I think the the main things that we're asking them to look at in terms of the site plan review are berms and plantings on the west side of the property um, to mitigate noise, as well as. Um, tree plantings along the east side of the property to mitigate sight lines for the people on Flag Road. Um, we can, we will also mention that, you know, we are interested in anything they can do to further the monitoring of truck traffic. In, the, in traffic patterns, right? Yeah. Did we want to address, I thought we had done that adequately in the last meeting, address soil, drainage, that's the engineering. Like yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, that's, really, that's really conservation. I, I yeah, because that was addressed on the last meeting too. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I always feel like that the, the, yeah. the issue that's brought up where there's inadequate drainage, if it's going to conservation, it really should be addressed by, by conservation. I think so. So visual, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. Okay. And we don't, I mean, I don't think we want to go down the path of uh, Ken's commits to, Continuing to work with the neighbors. I mean, that's. Question. I'm not thinking. I just. That. I don't think that's a good condition. No, and, and these well, are these conditions. Are highlights conditions of our concerns. Suggestions. Yeah, these are highlights of our concerns. Yeah. Um, uh, that got brought up, that we did not feel were in our purview to provide conditions on, but wanted to make sure the appropriate boards were aware of. Right. Okay. Okay, so, all right. Um, we should bring Debbie back in, I think, at this point, if she's still there. I, I do want to mention there is another hand up. I don't know the public. Well, we are, the public meeting is closed though. Yeah, we don't really have a, a public comment section of our meetings. So um, we do see that Mr. Sears has his hand up, um, but I'm not sure we have a necessarily a venue to. Pay yeah, up. I mean, we 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 gave a pretty adequate period for public comment. Well, I don't. My meeting. guess is he's not necessarily going to talk about Kent's because we definitely can't hear anything about that. You know. Okay. I mean, if, if his comment is about the special permit application, we definitely can't hear it. Okay. I just want to be, uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. Um, I just want to be mindful of time here. Yeah. yeah. 
I think the, the only the thing we left with, on the agenda was approval of minutes. Um, minute. Right. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Sears, if you do have a comment that you would like us to hear, then I would suggest sending an email or giving a, getting in touch with Katie. Yeah, we definitely want to hear from you. We definitely yeah. want to hear from him, but, you know, I, <laughs> I'm running out of time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, th I think we've been more than reasonable in terms of the, in terms of the time. So yeah. I would agree with what you're saying. He's, he's certainly got the opportunity to, to send us an email. Uh, I, I've received other emails, so I don't, they certainly have that, that ability, but I do think we, we should try to yep. close the meeting by, by uh, or having a look at or discussing the minutes from the last meeting. I, I did take a look at them today. I mean, there was a lot there, but I mean, in my opinion, Katie did a really good job. I, I, I like them the way they are. I don't know how everybody else felt about them. I I looked at them also, and I you I agree there was there was quite a bit, but I I do think it it uh, it captured accurately what transpired. Same with me. All right. Make a motion to approve the minutes as drafted. I'll second that. All right. A motion to approve motion. the minutes as written, seconded. All in favor, say aye. Doris. Aye. Paul. Aye. Mike? Aye. Craig? And aye for Williams. Right. The minutes are approved. Um, before we leave, Katie, what, knowing that we just moved one to next month, what, else, what, are, we, what are we looking at in June? So we do have um, that one. We have another, um, another accessory dwelling that will be coming in June, and then we have an appeal that is with Aldo right now. So we'll be finding out soon if we're gonna move forward with that. What's an appeal with Aldo? The, uh, there's appeal of a building permit for um, a, a large addition. The appeal is brought on by the abutter, um, but no, no real error was um, highlighted, but- It's the one off of Sears, right? It's um, presidential. Presidential. Yeah, yeah. The one we we talked about, I talked about it with David and Michael. Yep. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I put it through just to see if there was any um, any like to stand on as far as moving forward. Right. Yeah, that that just sounds unusual to me. I don't. I, I haven't. We haven't come across one like that yet. I have. It's granted, and I'm unhappy. And <laughs> so, okay. Um, all right, and that that is planned oh, planned for June twenty third, correct? I think it was June sixteenth. So oh, June sixteenth. Yeah, yeah. We all good with that date? I'm good. Okay. All right. Specialty. Paul, I'd like to make a motion to uh, close tonight's meeting. We've got to have a second. Okay. Motion to close and second it. All in favor? Aye. Doris? Aye. Paul? Oh, yes. Uh, Mike? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Craig? Really want to say no, just to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Not recognized. Jamie? <laughs> you have to vote for you instead then. <laughs> and then see it accurately uh, in the minutes next month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just testing Katie, that's all. <laughs> All right, Williams, aye. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Take care, Al. Um, being disappointing, so. What? I was just saying to Debbie, sorry for the decision being disappointing. I'm sure that's tough. So I just, I feel you. So just, yeah. I just want. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Yeah, sucks. It is tough. Well, I thought that was difficult for me. Do we need to be live? Is the means close? No. No, we really should be off. <laughs> Take care, everyone. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Take care, everyone. Have a good evening.